What is your American dream? Uh, my American dreams at this moment is living the blissful aspect of knowing that I could be free of my detachments. If I could detach anything that is creating pain and that this country has allowed me to become the best version of me, I think that is called the American dream for me. The American dream too is about realization. The most important thing in, in my life is to find my home. I'm so grateful for to, to be living in, in America and it's in a, such an experience for me. To connect with, with my soul is the way that I'm living my American dream. Living the American dream in the wildest dream. Who would I ever thought that I was gonna live in New York City having these amazing choices and possibilities. America has been the best gift I ever had because it has allowed me to become the best version of who I am. Everyone has a right to the American dream. Groundhog Sam! <laughs> okay, okay, I love it when Brad gives me a task. That's me! Get the task done, Groundhog Sam! So Brad asked me to make copies of our most recent rundown so he could have a record of what we've done. I know in the past I've had my issues with making copies, but I've grown, I've grown. Hey, I feel like someone's watching me. Oh, Lucky, why are you staring at me, Lucky? It makes me very paranoid. It makes me think that you're just watching me to see if I mess up. And that's going to make me nervous, and then I'm going to mess up. Okay, I got this. It's working. It's working. I did it. I did it. I did it. Excellent! I did it! Man, every time I'm around this copier, I start to get this feeling like I really want to make a copy of my butt. It's such a tease. I mean, it's right here, and I fit so well on it. Mm, no one's gonna know. Lucky, stop watching me. I can't. I gotta do it. I gotta do it. Okay, okay. I know this isn't really professional, but I mean, how do you not make a copy of your butt when you're at the copier and you're so small you fit in the copier? <laughs> Ooh, it's warm. Lucky, stop watching. Oh my God, this is so cool. Look, it's a copy of my tail. Oh my God, this is amazing. I never get to see my tail. Now I know what my tail looks like. Amazing. I'm going to put this up on the wall next to Pippa. Oh, hello, everybody. Groundhog Sam here. Just doing some tasks for Brad. And, you know, I got a little distracted. Hmm, Lucky, stop looking at me. Anyway, I'm a little concerned because Lucky's in the office today and she's really checking me out. I'm a... I'm afraid she's going to tell Brad on me because I was supposed to make copies. I ended up making a copy of my tail because I can't help it. Anyway, did you miss yesterday's episode of Brad Show Live? Well, in case you did, Belgium Kim went to the Lights for Liberty Global Vigil in downtown Manhattan that happened last Friday. Do you know that over 800 cities all over the globe had vigils to protest? Donald Trump's hardline immigration policies and separation of families. It was really a beautiful event. And Belgium Kim talked to lots of interesting people who had a lot of important things to say. Anyway, now is the time you have all been waiting for. It's time for Brad Show Live, starring Brad Bernstein with co-host Belgium Kim and Jonathan Yo-Yo Elias. Enjoy! All right, Lucky, I'm gonna get you up here too. I'm gonna take a copy of your tale too, and that way you won't be able to tell Brad on me because we'll both have done it. Yep. Enjoy the show, everyone. Come here, Lucky. Welcome everybody, July 17th. It is Wednesday, and everybody knows what happens on Brad Show Live on Wednesday. Belgium Kim, Jonathan Yo Yo Elias, What's tell up? everybody what happens what? on Wednesdays. It's Hot Day! 
right. All right. And by the way, <laughs> by the way, it is Asset Lindo's birthday today. Yeah. Happy birthday, Asset. Happy birthday. We, 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 birthday. We, we will wish everybody happy birthday if we knew it's their birthdays, That's but true. we we were told in advance about Asset Lindo's birthday. Mm-hmm. So happy birthday. And she's spending her birthday watching the show. What, a, what an right. amazing birthday gift. That is an amazing You're birthday welcome. gift. <laughs> Getting hump day news. What right. a birthday gift. <laughs> Our uh, gift to you. Yes. All right. Dion Watson, Lewis Petchfabson. Hi, Marjorie Thompson, Marge Higgs. Popping in. Zane, Supermom Gooden. Haven't seen her in a while. Right. We haven't super seen mom. her in a while. What's up? Where's she been doing? She's been doing her Supermom stuff. Ooh, yes. Right? Being a Supermom. Yes. <laughs> uh, Mia Montauk and uh, Lolita Platt, Angela Barrett. Uh, Willie L. Williams, Ma Dukes, and Ali Boo Beecher. Oh, Jessica Kalimi just popping in. And on Ooh. YouTube, <laughs> Jamina Lessa Karulva. Jessica Kalimi just reminded us of something. What? She said, please remember, no orange man in the news today, Uncle Brad. Okay, no oh. problem. She's not wrong. We did no, say that. We said that. Say no that problem. For no no problem. Uh, Messiah Messi- Messianic. Mess, mess, messianic? Messiah Messianic. Messiah Messianic. Yes, yeah, says it's the best show that brings relief to everybody. Scarlet Knight, Danny, quite contrary, Contreras saying hello. Philip Ross, Sidhu Davis, Rocky247, compared to Lucky, that's Rocky. <laughs> or maybe that's Lucky saying like Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy Lacey and uh, Belgium Cammy. You know who we have in the Brad Squad member Ooh. of the day? Who's that? Uh, she's watching. She's been. She knows she's coming up. Okay. I saw about four or five comments by her already. Yashika Burden, Yashika. Yashika. Brad Squad member of the day. She's oh. a proud oh. Jamaican-born woman. She's 36 years old. She and her husband have an adorable four-year-old son. She says that her greatest feature are her green eyes. Ooh. She loves, loves, loves them. Let's go back to Yashika's green eyes. Can we get a close up? Let's see on her green eyes. Can we get a close up? Uh, I can Julian? see it. Julian, can we get a close up on that? Ooh. I have bad eyes. I have bad eyesight. Ooh. She's a pretty lady. Very pretty, very yeah. pretty. And despite the feisty personality. Uh-oh. Yeah. All right, because she's a little feisty in those comments. She's feisty right? in our comments. She considers herself an introvert. Yeah, oh, right. What? Yeah, right. <laughs> She is not an introvert. Aww, she's All right, she loves to read and cook, and she throws down in the kitchen so well that Uh-oh. her friends started calling her Rachel Roy. Wow. Uh, now, in Rachel 2002, Ray, she... Per- Rachel Ray, excuse me. In 2002, she participated in the Miss Jamaica World Cornwall Pageant. Whoa, whoa. What is the Miss Jamaica World Cornwall Pageant? I'm assuming it's a beauty pageant. Can, you, can you look that up, please? I sure can. Or maybe Yashika can tell us in the comments. Today, she is a stay-at-home mom in South Florida, and she wouldn't change it for the world, even though she has an associate's degree in hotel and restaurant management. She's beautiful with green eyes and has smart with that degree, and she's in a pageant, and she is uh, a wife and a mother and a cook. Yeah. And she says she loves her Bradshaw Life family and the king, hashtag king of immigration. I guess that's me. Yeah, that is definitely that's you. Me. And did we find out what the Miss Jamaica World Cornwall pageant is? You know what? I am looking and I'm seeing a lot of gorgeous ladies with a crown on top of their head. So oh, I'm yeah. going to go beauty, beauty pageant. Beauty pageant. <laughs> All right. Yeah. There we are. Yashika Burden, our Brad Squat, Squad Spotlight member of the day. Belgium, Kim, Jonathan, Yo-Yo Ellis, why don't you tell everybody what to do? Because we're going to get into hump day news in about five, three one minute. Oh, one minute. all right. On one minute. Right. We're going to make this fast. <laughs> I was so. going to say five minutes. I'm going to be like, you're, no, you're not going to tell people five too minutes. Long. It's too long. All right, everybody, please, right now, click the link that we're about to put right now, and that link will direct you straight to the Brad Squad group. And the Brad Squad group gets you so many incentives. The main one is you get first dibs first five people to put in their social media questions we will read them you see that we haven't been getting to a lot lately but we will today we guarantee you but the first five that put their uh their social media questions in the group will get it so make sure you join the group right now now facebook everybody share 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 
This is gonna be an amazing show, it's hump day. You already know we're gonna have some crazy news, crazy calls, crazy questions, so please share. Just press that arrow that says share. Share to anybody's page, groups, and most importantly, let's share it in the inbox. Now, we also want interaction. Please put anything and everything you wanna talk about, or um, like we found out, birthdays, ask at Lindo, Lindo's birthday. You guys, please put anything you want in these comments. We want to hear what you guys have to say and also your social media uh, questions in there. And also, start a watch party. Start a watch party. You guys already know how to do it. Now, Kim, what are we doing on YouTube? <laughs> on YouTube, if you have not done so yet, what are you doing watching this show and not being a subscriber? That's absolute nonsense. Hit that subscribe button right now and hit that little It's like bell. walking into McDonald's and not ordering the french fries. And right. Nobody does that. Ridiculous. That's right? part. That Ridiculous. Nobody does. I mean, I never saw anybody walk into McDonald's and not order the french fries. I just there had to go. convince right. someone That's to McDonald's. It's like watching Bradshaw Live and not subscribing. Ridiculous. 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 We are your daily dose of french fries, so exactly. hit that subscribe button exactly. right now <laughs> with that little bell so that you get a notification every time we go live around the 5.30-ish mark. Also, make sure that you are sharing the show. It's the easiest, best thing you can do for us, fam. Hit share, hit copy link, and then paste it. Paste it as a text message into whatever texting app you use. Paste it as a tweet or a Twitter DM or an Instagram DM. You can even commit all the way and put it in your Instagram bio, like link in bio, family. You got one of those? Put ours in there. Okay, family, and now is the time you've all been waiting for, because it's a real good day of schmoozing with Brad. All right, and top of the news, top of the news, Yashika Burden yeah. was in Miss Cornwall, what was, what was it? It was Miss, Miss Jamaica World Cornwall pageant. That's yes. right. That was the preliminaries for Miss Jamaica World pageant, I guess to be mm. Miss Universe. Wow. And according Woo. to First Lady Hewitt, for our non-Jamaicans, Cornwall is a county in Jamaica. Ah. That now, I actually did Now know. we know it all. Uh, in, oh. Who gave me this? I'm sorry, Brad, I'm sorry. You know what this I is? I forgot. This is about somebody we're not gonna talk about today. That's right, I oh. forgot. All right, I goodbye, forgot. goodbye. <laughs> oh, I, I won't even mention his name, nope. right? Uh, El Chapo. Yes, Jonathan. I saw. Yeah, say no to drugs, Jonathan, <laughs> because this guy is going to jail for life. Right. Uh, he was sentenced uh, to life in prison plus an additional 30 years. So after he's dead, he'll be <laughs> he another 30 years sitting there. Fair. All right. And he was also ordered to pay in forfeiture his entire fortune of $12.6 billion. billion. Now, what, what I I never understood. Yeah. Where When people forfeit this money mm -hmm. where's it going that was gonna okay. be my question where's it going like for example like facebook just got fined by the u.s government five billion dollars yeah okay and zuckerberg wrote his check to the u.s government ha 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 right and he went off to some charitable event that night and he seemed perfectly uh -huh. okay five right. billion dollars didn't mean a lot to him right where who gets this five billion dollars yes i, would I mean it goes into that. the treasury but what's it doing why don't we when they forfeit money right let's Point it to something that can be good, like like, a, like drug rehabilitation. Right, it has to go to anti-drug policy. Anti-drug policy, or something. Smart. We have no idea what this is going. So we really don't I, know. Nobody knows. Where I this don't goes. know. Maybe it is. I nobody on this. I will tell you this. <laughs> nobody <laughs> sitting in this room knows where it's going. This I can what, tell you that. What I find very interesting is where, as a drug kingpin, do you store twelve point six billion dollars? Well, I, I've oh. I've seen the movies. I've, right, see, I've right. seen the movies. They Same. have they have cash in duffel bags buried all over the place. Right, mm -hmm. right. right. And then and then when they go to they go to dig it up ten years later, it's all rotted away. Right, I've seen so, those movies so, too, but so, it's a lot of digging for so twelve point six. So what what generally they do? <laughs> yeah. Okay, like um, what was the guy in uh, Colombia? Uh, what was the guy in Colombia? Uh, uh, Pablo Escobar. Pablo Escobar. Escobar. Yeah. He had a taxi business. Right. So they have, shell, they they have shell companies. Okay. So he had a taxi business. His entire taxi business was two taxi cabs, and that taxi business made billions. A <laughs> hundred million. <laughs> billions, <laughs> billions of dollars. Two taxi cabs. He, when he listed, he said, what is your profession? I'm a taxi cab driver. But he was making about a billion dollars Just like uh, driving um, taxis. If you guys have ever seen Breaking Bad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so he had a car wash business. <laughs> Somebody just said that to me. You've not watched it? You've never seen you Breaking Bad. You have to. Oh my God. You I was, have I was to. talking. I was talking. Don't even talk. You I was talking to. to Motion David Lee 
Levy, both personal injury attorneys here at Spar and Bernstein, about two hours ago, yeah. and I mentioned something else about somebody having a shell company, uh -huh. mm -hmm. and David Levy says, just like breaking, it said the same thing. Watch it. He just said, just right, like yeah. breaking bad with it. the car wash. So I go, good. I never saw it. He goes, you'll love it. He did, it. did exactly what you just did. He just <laughs> pointed at me, he goes, you would love it. Yeah. You would love it. Watch Breaking it. Bad is one of the best television shows of all time. And then watch Ozarks. You'll like that. Too. Ozarks so is good. Either. But start with Breaking Bad. All right. Breaking Bad. All right. So uh, now you know El Chapo. He escaped Mexican jail through a tunnel <laughs> in 2015. Okay. He was later arrested. And he was extradited <laughs> to the U.S. in 2017. Uh, it was not immediately clear whether he's going to appeal. But apparently, according to the New York Post, he was crying in court today because he's never going to be able to see his beauty queen wife ever again. <laughs> that's that, that's what the New York Post said. That El Chapo was in tears I mean, because he would, he would never be able I to see she, his hot wife again. I know she probably in tears too since they took all the money. They took all right. the money. Well, <laughs> yeah, well, well, yeah, Jonathan, she's back on the market now. Uh, well, I definitely As can't what? afford her. All right. Well, well, she seems to be. I, I don't want to disparage anybody, right. but she really seems to be somebody who would just really marry somebody for the money. Well, uh, I, mean, I mean, when you're uh, marrying the drunk kingpin, right? Yeah. I mean, you're like, you're like, are you in it for the money, lady? But Brad, do you really want to be the guy who's married to the woman after she's married to the billion dollar kingpin? Hell no. You know what I'm that's saying? That's your no. life. Like, that's no. like, I don't want to be a juror on that trial either. It's All the right. same reasons. Exactly. I'm not effing with anyone <laughs> that has anything to no. do with that by six degrees of removal. Oh, yes. No. Can you imagine I go on a date with her and I don't know it's El Chapo's ex-wife? Uh, you better be careful uh, swiping. That would be a great... <laughs> by, the way, if anybody, by the way, if anybody wants the right of... A screwball comedy? That's a screwball comedy that right is. there, right? You know, like you go, you go, you know, like the drunk kingpin goes away, and you're like t on Tinder, and you like find her, you're on a date, and then all of a sudden, like you have like you know people coming to kill you now. Ooh. All right, so El Chapo's in jail. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. I I, I make movies in my head sometimes. I, I, like, I, I always wanted to be a movie writer. Yeah. I never did it. Though. I was just about to say yeah. El Chapo's in jail, and Brad just gave away another million dollar another movie million idea. Dollar movie Take idea. it and run all with right. it. Uh, retired. <laughs> Supreme Court Justice John Paul Stevens, he's dead yeah. at 99. Very sad. Uh, he was nominated by Gerald Ford in 1975 in the wake of Watergate. He was very soft-spoken. He passed away peacefully. Uh, he is remembered, uh, John Roberts remembered Stevens on Tuesday as a public servant whose unrelenting commitment to justice has left us a better nation. Aww. Uh, we talked about the uh, uh, death of the... of. Um, um, the African American Museum founder Sadie Roberts yes. Joseph yesterday. Yeah. The police have arrested somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, his name is Ron Jermaine Bell. Mm. Oh. Police say Bell was a tenant in the building that Roberts Joseph owned. Mm. Oh. He, they say that Bell killed her. Police said the man owed her twelve hundred dollars in rent, <laughs> and they obviously she went to go collect the rent, and in return she got killed. That's now, insane. she was a beloved icon in the Baton Rouge community. Her daughter memorialized her mother at a press conference yesterday. She said, all my mother ever wanted was for this community to come together. What she wanted to happen in life came to fruition mm. in death. Mm. Very sad. Her children have really been... Am amazingly uplifting during this time. Yes. What her yes. what yeah. her son said yesterday, saying yes. he would yeah, even forgive the yeah the beautiful. Well, that's By the way, beautiful that's what children. She would want. Yeah. Okay. Right. Which goes to show what type of what? Person, what? Person, person she was, she was to was. raise to raise children like this. hundred percent. Yeah. Meanwhile, uh, yesterday was the fiftieth anniversary of the liftoff of the Apollo Eleven, which eventually made it to the moon. Uh, we it was the first. First uh, rocket ship and first people yeah. step on the moon in 1969 in August. Uh, the, f the National Monument, the Washington National Monument, uh, was lit up to symbolize the spaceship. It was a 363-foot projection of the Saturn V rocket, and it's going to appear for two hours every night during the anniversary of the mission that put the first two humans, Neil Whoa. Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, into space. Wow. And I will give you uh -huh. some Brad Bernstein trivia. Ready. Oh, okay. Are you ready for Brad Bernstein That's trivia? That's hilarious, because yeah. I have a piece of trivia, too, so I wonder okay. if it's the same trivia. So here's Brad. No, you don't know this trivia. I've never said this to anybody ever okay. in this office. Okay. Or to Brad Squad. Okay. I only saw it because I saw the guy's name, Buzz Aldrin. I 
have okay. a Buzz Aldrin fact okay, too. Okay, so uh, no Buzz way. Aldrin, he was the second guy on the moon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was born in 1968. Uh-huh. Okay, and I, this happened in 69. I don't know who came up with the name, but what from my sisters I know did not like the name Brad. Uh-huh. They didn't want me to be Brad. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then they just decided to start calling me Buzz. <laughs> <laughs> and I, from my birth to about six or seven years old, I never even knew my name was Brad. <laughs> All right, I'd go to school, the teacher would call me Buzz. Wow. My friends what? call me Buzz. And then I don't know what happened. Around seven, I'm like, I don't want to be called Buzz anymore. Can you call me Brad, please? And then that was the end of Buzz. That would be kind of weird if we had to call you Buzz. Buzz, yes. <laughs> Can we go back Buzz, to Buzz? Buzz Show Live. That would be terrible. <laughs> Buzz, Buzz, Show Buzz Show Live. Yeah. So I only saw it because there's a Buzz Aldrin on the moon. Wait, oh, wow. can, oh, I kind of want to go back to Buzz. Buzz Bernstein. <laughs> Buzz Bernstein. <laughs> <laughs> it was your fault. Yeah, That's your fault. Yeah, it's my fault. <laughs> yeah, I have another Buzz Aldrin fun fact, which what? I learned two days ago. What? What? His mother's maiden name was Moon. Oh, come on. Swear to God. Oh. Swear to come God. On, Can't weird. make it up. That's Can't make weird. it up. So I would assume, I don't know how long the uh -oh. mission took. They're calling like, you Uncle Buzz. Uncle by Buzz. The way. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, they're going like, to be like, Uncle Buzz, can I, can I buzz by a question by you now? So, uh, by the brand. way, by the way, they're bringing back Buzz, right? Yeah, they are. Right, right? Can you imagine hashtag bring back Buzz? I was just about to say, I'm going to get Hashtag, hashtag bring back hashtag, Buzz. Hashtag, hashtag bring back Buzz is coming back. Uh, buzz the Brad? That's right. So, um, uh, what was I lost track. Uh, I don't know how long the spaceship took to reach the moon. What is the actual <laughs> landing date? Because that's the big day. It'll, uh, it's this weekend. So it's this the weekend. So, the landing date, landing on the moon was... On the wait no no all right well we'll figure it out meanwhile yeah. I have July twentieth I have this app it's terrible you know Don't about do this it. app yeah. the face app <sighs> I did it I did it you did it I did it damn it you didn't post and it, didn't, it and it didn't even look like me just looked oh. like a shriveled up <laughs> Buzz Bernstein. <laughs> Uh, it didn't even look like a shriveled That's up Brad Buzz. Bernstein it looked like shriveled up Buzz Mine Bernstein was scary it was really bad. And then when I did younger, <laughs> oh, that's mine! <laughs> oh, you have yours. That's scary. I didn't know that this we were you gonna didn't do post this. Post yours. I didn't know we were gonna do I this. I would, tell I, I would have done it, but I looked about it. I'm like, oh, mine is awful. <laughs> so I didn't even post it. I was just playing around with it. And then when I did the younger one, I look, I look like I was Hispanic. I didn't even look like. Me. <laughs> it didn't even look like. So I'm like, this Hart. is terrible. This is terrible. So, uh, but now security experts are warning yeah. that yeah. this that this app was made by Russian security yeah, services in St. Petersburg, Russia, and that they really did it and giving it out free to the world. Do you think this is a conspiracy theory or this is really true? I don't think that's uh, true. They're giving it out free to the world so that they can catalog every person's facial recognition who has this app, and they're starting to catalog famous people who've done it, like um, uh, the Jonas Brothers have done it. Right. Uh, Dwayne, Dwayne Wade. Look yeah. at Drake. Right, Drake. Drake did it. So they're trying to catalog all their faces and they now have all this facial recognition. But it doesn't make any sense to me because why can't they just go on their Instagram feed and just pull the That's face? That's what I'm saying. So like, it doesn't make any sense. So now, <laughs> Look at that now the horrible. app has responded to the claims. That's so scary. Okay. Yeah, because the, right. the scary thing is that you're granting them access to your entire camera. Okay, now, now this is what Vladimir Putin says. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is what the app says. Okay, the app says that they do not save the photos to the iCloud for more than 48 hours, and they only have access to this to, up, to upload the app. This is this is why yeah, I don't do these right, things. This is right, exactly why I do not jump right, on these bandwagons. Right. But I mean, like we have facial recognition from our phones and stuff as well. Well, so. but that's what it's saying is that the very scary thing of, with hackers with this technology is that if granting them access to all of those things means that any hacker that hacks into this app can also see through your phone camera at any given time. All right, and finally, finally, Belgium Kim. Yeah. I don't know who this guy is, but there's obviously an immig another immigration show other than ours. Is there? I, apparently, it's called 90 Day Fiance. <laughs> okay, a little more famous than us, it right? Kind of, <laughs> kind of a little more famous show than us. We're getting there. Yeah. Right. We're getting there. And there's a guy on 90 Day Fiance by the name of Jay Smith, and he got his fiance visa, but then he got into a domestic altercation with his estranged wife, Ashley Martson. There is a, uh, he then, tried to contact her or go near her. Right. He violated the order of protection, mm -hmm. which is an aggravated felony. 
under the immigration laws if you violate an order of protection, and he is now immediately deportable. Now, wow. he started a GoFundMe campaign because mm -hmm. he now fears for his life. Uh, why does he fear for his life? Because people... Because, he, he, because he's made money on television. And he's right. famous now. And he's famous now. Where is he from? What country? Jamaica. She's from Jamaica. Okay. So this is the story. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, as an aggravated felon, mm -hmm. as an aggravated felon, he doesn't need to raise... What, if he made all this money, first of all, right? why does he need to raise money... Well, that's the thing. That, that doesn't make he any probably, sense. He probably doesn't really have that much uh, money. The perception but then the, the is that he made that the money. Right. Has, okay, yeah, that, that fame. That he's gonna, if, that's his, if that's his thing, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm no judge, but I'm telling you, he's getting deported. Oof. Okay, so uh, the, only, the, only, the only relief he would have is something called Convention Against Torture. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what Convention Against Torture says is, if I go back to my home country, um, I, I'm going to be killed, maimed, or tortured. And the, and the Jamaican government or the Canadian government or the English government or wherever country you're going back to knows about it and either won't or can't help me, okay? I don't think that's a claim because they perceive that he has money. So lots of people go to Jamaica now. that are perceived to have money. Now, if he goes to, I guess, some, you know, some bad parts of Jamaica, yeah. Right. But that doesn't mean you have to go to bad parts of Jamaica, right? Now, we got some 90 Day Fiance watchers and Scarlett Knight is saying two things happened that are really interesting. Okay, because I never watched the show. No, me, me neither. neither. Okay, um, I'm still I'm still trying to get to Breaking Bad. Okay, you I, think need that, to. I think that's you more. Need I think that's more. more, more I think that's more day. important than. Yeah. 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 I'm going to be asking way, you every day. And by the way, why would I watch 90 Day? I live that every day. Okay, <laughs> I, I, I'm like I'm like oh my god, I'm watching work. Okay, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but uh, Scarlett Knight said two things. One. His American wife on the show apparently hit him on camera. Uh huh. So is there something that he can do, being as an as an abused spouse, if he got hit on camera? Um, mm. was 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 she arrested? I don't believe so because okay. I did not see so, anything that so, said any yeah, domestic he, violence. Right. If he was if she was not arrested, um, you can maybe mm -hmm. maybe you can file for a VAWA case. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't be eligible to adjust your status because um, you may be inadmissible because of the domestic violence and the violation of the protection order, mm -hmm. but you would be able to get a VAWA application filed, and if you got a VAWA application filed, that would, be, that, would, that would prevent him from getting deported. And our other people are saying that she also kept all the money from him because the immigrants don't get paid to appear on that show, only the Americans, and she apparently so kept all, all the money. So they, they're, they're all, they're well, all Jay Smith team. Um, they're Jay they're Smith. team Jay Smith. They're team Jay Smith. Smith. And now who's this woman, Ashley? She's uh, the one who got, she's yes. the one who got abused and everyone says basically she had it coming? No, she, she hit him. She hit him. They're so saying why she, she, why was she, why was he arrested? Because he, he's the black guy in the relationship? So he violated an order of... But the way he violated the order of protection is just by posting about her on social media. He what? said He said she just served me with an order of protection and apparently that violated... Talking about it violated the order. All right. So that's why he is now All in right. removal Jay proceedings. Jay Smith. Okay. <laughs> you don't need to have raised $5,000 from 172 contributors. <laughs> you need $200 for a consultation with me, <laughs> and we will figure it all out. Bam. In the meantime, it is hump day. Where are the camels, Belgium Kim? Yeah, then let the camels out. Let Where are they? Okay. Here they are. All right, now, now Yonathan, how happy were you today when you showed up and you saw Belgium Kim was going to be sitting between us on Humpty. Very. Okay. <laughs> All right. Because Belgium came those Very. few weeks that you were away. <laughs> yeah. Back which in the was months back ago. In, which was months ago. We're still, we're we're still, still tortured we're still by tortured it. By we're it. still tortured yes. by this. <laughs> because in. we kept getting every day, every news article for Hump Day was a penis story. <laughs> and, yeah, and I'm like, go to Yonathan. I'm like, all right, here's one more penis story. <laughs> and Yonathan's like, dude, just stay on this side of the desk. Don't even come over you know, near me. Right? A girl leaves for three <laughs> weeks in right. February, and it is July, y'all. Oh. <laughs> yes, and we'll be talking about it next Never year as well. Never living it down. All right, so where do you get, what kind of show? do you get you don't get this on 90 day fiance mm. no right you don't get news sex news immigrant uh. immigration <laughs> advice immigration you don't get this stuff right right all right so meanwhile uh uh i think this one is for both of you 
Okay. Jonathan in Belgium came. Okay. Okay. All right. The uh, they're now at the Consumer Technology Electronic Show in Las Vegas, which is the largest consumer video technology show in the world. Yeah. This year they will be featuring sex toys. Woo! The move is Woo! a reaction to the controversy we talked about earlier this year over the treatment of startup Laura DiCarlo, whose smart vibrator had its show award revoked and then later returned. That's right, we talked yes, about that. Yes, you remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, uh, Laura DiCarlo, found, the founder of the, uh, said that this is a step in the right direction. Now, the, now, if you remember, the controversy exploded after many techies pointed out the inequality present on the CES floor as sex yeah. tech geared for men like sex robots and virtual reality porn had been on the show floor for several years. Uh, also addressing the issue of female objectification in the tech world where women are notoriously underrepresented. Mm -hmm. uh, this plan also will not strictly enforce its ban on scantily dressed models. Good for them. Finally, some inclusion for women in the tech industry. Good for nice. them. All right. So now, Steve-O. <laughs> yeah, you know this Jack guy Jack from Jackass, from Jackass, Jackass, mm -hmm. Jackass in Belgium. Very. <laughs> how would you how would you say it in Belgium? Jackass, Jackass, Jackass. You are a Jackass, Jackass. Right. Well, he certainly is a Jackass after you hear this story. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, it appears that he did the bottle cap challenge with his penis. Oh my God. And uh, and now uh, it wouldn't be summer without a new viral challenge. This is the bottle cap challenge, <laughs> and you must roundhouse kick the cap off a plastic bottle of water. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what does that mean? You kick it, you have the cap on, and then you kick it off, and then you gotta keep the bottle standing. Right, mm -hmm. so, so we now, have so a video now, of a few people so doing now, it right. All right, so let's see, let's see him do it the right way. Like this was the original one that kind of okay. started it all. All right. Oh, wow. Ah, uh, I see. Did okay. Someone holds the bottle, obviously. Or it's flat on the table. Right, okay. Yeah. All right, so now he decided he wanted to do this off of his Penis, right? Because he's a jacas, jacas, mm -hmm. jacas. So um, uh, the he's he's uh, he was graced us with a hump day edition. <laughs> uh, the forty five year old prankster captioned the video: "Nothing but D dash dash K, just the tip." <laughs> we have the video. <laughs> what? Let's watch. Let's watch what he does. Right. Oh, he's doing it with his penis. He's doing it with his penis. Oh my god. I thought he was knocking the bottle off of his penis. That's even worse. Can you imagine you cut yourself? You could have had a whole circumcision right there. That poor water bottle. He could have had a whole out of that he had, Did he have to have a Viagra before he did that? I mean, what do you that do, right? That is ridiculous. We see that one more time. We <laughs> love <laughs> Be able to say that Did John Jonathan just say ridiculous? <laughs> that is ridiculous. So he's like erect. He's erect. You have to take it if I <laughs> answer something, it, right? I don't know. Does it have? Why can't it be like? By the way, and by the way, I'm on social media every day. I never heard of the bottle cap challenge. Really? really? God, I've yeah. seen the bottle cap challenge everywhere lately. Like yeah. Seen it everywhere. Yeah, I saw one dude kick a whole gallon of milk because he missed the bottle cap. I seen um, a stripper do it. A really? stripper girl, a stripper. and she just moved her butt one, with one cheek, and it, nice. <laughs> and it actually did it. Yeah. Yeah. Mar yeah. Mariah Carey attempted to do it with her voice. It didn't work. I she, think we have yeah, that he has, one. He has, he has, who's this one? Oh, wow. You just have to roundhouse it? Yeah. Let's see. This is with a bottle of liquor. A bottle of See? Wow. They're, they're great. They're yeah. great. Yeah. I'd probably pull a muscle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Yeah. Home of the Green Bay Packers. Right. Okay. Home of, home of uh, Cheese, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. uh, the residents there, they're fed up with two adults having sex in the park all the time. <laughs> okay. Not all now, the time. Uh, yeah, all the time they're having sex in the park, these two adults. Wait, the same people or the different same, people? I don't know. We're going to find out right now. Uh, in Green Bay, Wisconsin, one resident got more than he bargained for when he went to sit on his front porch one oh, evening. Okay. Or maybe he got, more, he got more than he bargained for. <laughs> yeah, he did. All right, not a bad view. Oh, not right? bad. Now, Green Bay, Wisconsin police say they, respond, they responded to reports of two people having sex on a playground at Farland Park on Sunday night. The concerned citizens said, quote, for a while they were just swinging on the swings and then they decided to walk on the playground equipment where kids play and they decided to have sex. I can't. Now each person was cited for lewd and lascivious behavior 
and were fined five hundred dollars. Unfortunately, neighbors said police use uh, people use the park to get busy there all the time. It's like the sex what? park, and they're getting frustrated that the police are not intervening to stop people from having sex in this particular park. <laughs> right. I don't know why is that park so. But the most this is the thing that I realized when digging, Brad. It's number nine. That's the. It's not a this park problem. What is it? The last bullet. It's Lieutenant Mahoney. Right, Lieutenant okay, Mahoney. Number seven. Kim. The, the, the police right. department the responded police department. and said, this is the issue. All right, so he says, <laughs> we were unaware that this is a situation in Farland Park. There's another park in the area that we've had a lot of <laughs> lewd and lascivious issues going on. So we've been monitoring that park, and we have cameras out there. They've been monitoring the wrong, the wrong goddamn park. park. Or while people are just going to another park. All the people are just banging in all the parks across <laughs> no. the world. I was about to say that. I that think that I, happens at I, our park. No, I think, what? I think, yeah. I think, I think, well, Jonathan, did you ever get down in Central Park? No, not. Uh, did you ever get down in Central Park? <laughs> Uh, did I? Oh, okay. oh <laughs> did I maybe. Uh, it was kind of close. Uh, there was more parks back well, maybe, in Cali maybe, when maybe, I was younger. Maybe you kiss somebody there, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You walk through Central Park at night and kiss somebody. I'm talking about right? at night. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right. So it happens that. in all parks. <laughs> I thought, you were gonna, I thought you were going to say that all the people who wanted to have outdoor sex knew that the police <laughs> were looking at this park, so they said, let's go to the other yeah, park. No. That's a Facebook group of yeah. public oh, sex yeah, havers? Uh, <laughs> it, it happens at every park. This, what? That's, that's what you do. What do you mean? I go to the park all the time and never you've see never, other humans. You've never done anything at the park? No. At night? Not at night. No. No. I <laughs> didn't mean not at night. No. What? 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 Brad, be the tiebreaker. What? Are parks places that people have, have you sex ever done frequently? anything at a park at night at any time of your lifetime? Yeah. Are you talking about having sexual intercourse? Basically. No. Or any kind of. Close to it. In a park? Yeah. Kiss. But right. that's about exactly. it. Right, exactly. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Brad. Y'all not living. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we don't have lewd and lascivious yes. charges on our record. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow you're going to be like reading the New York Post. Bernstein gets arrested in a park. Right? <laughs> 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 yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. right. All right. He's going to live. Meanwhile, meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, <laughs> I've, heard, I've heard of people getting jealous. Yeah. I've heard of people getting very uh, anxious that their spouse or their girlfriend may be cheating on them or their boyfriend, mm. okay? They may become very insecure. Yeah. Okay? Typical. But this has now taken insecurity and jealousy to a whole new level, Belgium Kim. Okay. A Florida man has allegedly used a pair of scissors to cut off the penis of his oh. wife's lover. Oh, yes. no! Yes, Alex Bonilla, 49. He's accused of committing this heinous act on his neighbor while the victim's two kids were home last Sunday. That's terrible. Ooh, the victim told the police that Bonilla attacked pictures. him at gunpoint and threatened to kill him <laughs> if he didn't resist. Oh Once inside the neighbor's God. bedroom, Bonilla allegedly tied up the victim and attacked him with a pair of, this is disgusting. Oh my God. Bonilla then fled the house with the man's detached penis. According to the, to the report, Bonilla has caught his wife and neighbor having sex last May. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah. Okay, he is gonna go to jail for the rest of his life. That's not even funny. I don't even uh, know how that even made it here. This is supposed to be fun stuff. <laughs> All right. Okay, uh, but it's trending. It All right. Meanwhile, meanwhile, uh, Love Island 2019. It is uh, it is a oh, UK yeah. hit show. Yep. Uh, and it caused a sex website to crash due to too many uh, viewers searching for the quote eagle position. <laughs> <laughs> Oh the God. eagle position. Now, the show features hot single contestants on a tropical island searching for a summer of love and romance. Sounds <laughs> fine so far. Cute. Right. In the second episode of the newest season, yeah. the contestants took part in a challenge which involved guessing which juicy secret matched which islander. Right. During this challenge, <laughs> it was revealed that one of the islanders, one of the single bachelors, right. Curtis Pritchard's favorite sex position is dubbed the eagle. The okay. eagle. <laughs> no one knows what the hell the eagle is. Oh, you know, like, I, I don't know. You're like, wow, wow. <laughs> I don't know. So the revelation sparked the curiosity of Love Island fans and led to, quote, the eagle becoming the most searched sex position on Google this week. I can't. According to Love Island's official Twitter account. <laughs> it also caused the crashing of the website 
www.sexinfo101.com. <laughs> Now, some Twitter users shared pictures illustrating the eagle position to save others from having to Google it themselves. Let's see, do we have some pictures? Okay, so now we want to play a fun little game. What do you think the eagle, because we don't want to show a picture because they were just a little too graphic to show. All right, so I would say, what the, do you I, would think say it is? I would say the eagle is somebody's on their back, yeah. their arms are like this, and their legs are spread open. You know what? Where is the other person? The other person is also on their back in the same exact position <laughs> with, with, with the woman on top. That's, okay. that's how I would picture. That's, is that the eagle? That's like a double eagle. A double eagle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah I, was, I was trying to come up with something it's freaky. It's good, but I I'm trying to show them. <laughs> really, now, uh, that would be like a double reverse eagle. Uh, yes. It's really what that is. Isn't the eagle just your legs out like this? Yes. Yeah, exactly. So what yeah. is there not to know? But then right. I thought... That I thought maybe it was special that it would be like a double eagle type of thing. Well, so you know, like the woman would be on top. You know <laughs> no, what I'm the saying? Woman's you know, on the your back, back, no, no, no. Right. But then I thought, I, and then when Kim was like, "Oh, but it's like a special thing," so then I said, special. "Okay, well then the man is like that, <laughs> and then the woman's on top in the same position." It's special that would be because called, you have to that's, be that's Buzz. That's Buzz's double eagle. <laughs> that's Buzz. That's right. Buzz, Buzz, Buzz Buzz double eagle. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, Bernstein has been real opinionated yes. okay. this show. <laughs> oh, oh, now I get it. Brad has never done anything in the park, but Buzz has. Buzz has. Oh, that's oh, what it is. There we go. The alter ego. There we go. Buzz be getting it. down in the park. That's right. Buzz yeah, has gotten it, down it, in it, the it, park. New York Post tomorrow. Buzz Bernstein arrested. <laughs> Brad, and then all of a sudden I show up on this show yeah, at 5.30. I'm like, hey, that was Brad. <laughs> nothing, nothing happened to me. Right, Buzz is gone, though. Buzz Bernstein is going to be like your Sasha Fierce, Brad. Right. <laughs> like right. Buzz Bernstein. Let this be the day that Buzz, Buzz Bernstein right. comes alive. All right, so now uh, uh, in a, in a uh, sex festival. Mm -hmm. Where was the sex festival? Of course, in yeah. Worcester, England. Of course. Okay, always happens in right. Worcester, England. A 52-year-old female swinger reportedly had a heart attack uh, after pushing herself too hard during some group activities. Oh my God! All right, girl. I never heard. I never heard of a woman having a heart attack in group orgy activities Jeez. before. Well, okay. How many people? Just people. Buzz, Buzz knows these things. Okay. <laughs> Buzz, has, Buzz has these alerts on his That's phone. Right. What is that? Uh, it was uh, the festival was in full swing with 700 attendees playing games like a raunchy tug of war, jelly wrestling. But one festival source said the medical emergency didn't do anything to calm the party down. All right, and finally. Mm -hmm. All right, we have some scientific reasoning okay. behind what's going on to a lot of men. Okay, science. Okay. Love, love some uh, science. There's some scientific reasons for why your penis is getting smaller <laughs> okay. as you age. Urologists have confirmed that the penis, more accurately, the erect penis, mm -hmm. gets smaller over time in direct oh. proportion to your ears growing bigger. <laughs> is that a thing? It is a thing. Your ears grow bigger always. That's why old people have really big ears. They don't stop ever growing. Really? Yes. Now, Dr. Jamine Brombat, a Florida-based urologist, said the penis can lose about <laughs> a centimeter of length uh, from your 30s to your 60s. What? The difference, honestly, is minute, and many men may not even notice. The science is simple. Over time, the penis loses collagen and elasticity as a result of more cells aging and dying off. Okay. And there you have it, Belgium Kim. A centimeter is 0.4 inches. That's, that's that's a lot. That's pretty significant. That's very significant. That's almost half an inch. Yeah. yeah. Oh heck yeah! How that's are you a not lot. gonna notice that? Your body shrinks too. Oh, that's true. So maybe you're just everything more proportional. Is proportional. <laughs> yeah, everything's more proportional. I don't like I don't that. Know. I don't like <laughs> that either. News. So that's what you got to look forward to, Jonathan. Why don't you tell everybody? That's our hope news for the day. Why don't you please let everybody know what we need to do to share this. Now that we're going to get some serious immigration help for people. Absolutely. The first thing that we need you guys to do is join the Brad Squad. That's to everybody, whether you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, you need to be joining the Brad Squad. The way that you do that is go to Facebook.com slash Brad Show Live Brad Squad or just search it in the Facebook bar and hit that accept uh, join that button. We'll be here ready to hit the accept button. And the first five questions that get asked every single day in that group are the only ones that are going to be guaranteed to be answered on every single night's show. 
Make sure that if you have not yet liked and followed Bradshaw Live's official Facebook page, you do so right this second, because you're not gonna get notified if you don't make sure that you hit the like button and that little bell. Share the show! It's the easiest, best, most wonderful thing you can do for us because you let everybody else who hasn't heard about us know. So do that right now by clicking share, share it as a private message, get, get real intimate with it, you guys. It's hot, day. Make sure to start a watch party to get all the people in your life in the know about Bradshaw Live and make sure to let us know all of your thoughts and feelings in the comments. Yo, yo, what do we do on YouTube? On YouTube, first, you have to subscribe. You have to subscribe. Press that little red rectangle button that says subscribe and press the little bell that says notifications on because you never know when we're gonna come on with a pop-up show. And please, everybody, I wanna see interaction. I want you guys to put all of your questions in right now in the comments section. And everything that we're talking about, please talk to us. Let us know what you feel. I need you guys to interact with each other. Interact with us. Ask us a question. You could tag us. Just add us, put our name, and if you have a question for us. So please, everybody share as well. What you need to do is copy the link, send it in any social media, but most importantly, let's send it in a WhatsApp group. Just create a group of friends and family that you think might benefit from this show. Okay, I need you guys to do that. And last but not least, I need everybody press the thumbs up all right show love that's your way of showing love to us and it makes everybody else that watches the show know that this isn't actually a good show that helps with bringing people into the Brad squad now this is what you guys have all been waiting for even though hump news is something that you guys were waiting for as well but this is very important this is when you call in and Brad answers your questions with getting answers to your immigration questions all right I have my magic eight ball today yes magic eight ball Will oh, we get to a lot of social media questions oh, today? Yes. And the answer is yes, if you don't stop re repeating things and talking to Kim and Jonathan about stuff that doesn't matter. There you go. Wow. Like, what, pretty pretty the, specific the again. The crazy specific eight ball strikes <laughs> <Correct>. again. <laughs> so, <laughs> yesterday I repeated, yesterday, well I watched the show yesterday. Yesterday I repeated the same answer to somebody four times. Ooh. Oh. Right. Remember that That's one? That's why. And then, yeah. and then, That's why. And then I'm like, all right. And that then, was four I, questions. That no, it was one have, question. I, I repeated know, it four I'm saying, times. That could have been four that questions. Correct. Right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to try to get through our telephone calls and we're going to try to do as much social media. I know we didn't get to social media a lot yesterday. We're going to answer a lot today. I promise you that. So let's go quickly through our telephone calls because the people on social media they're starting they're starting to protest. They're starting yes. to riot. They're starting riots yeah. on Facebook and YouTube. Let's go <laughs> to Moses in Boston, Massachusetts. Moses. Hello, how are you doing? Good. I uh, I have a couple questions. Um, I filed a uh, form I one thirty, and uh, my priority date is uh, March twenty eighth. Right. And uh, I've been uh, watching the visa bulletin. And the uh, July is one of the charts is uh, current, right? And the other one is says um, uh, I think it's March eighth, right? So and one, one of the charts the, is to adjust your status here. The other chart is for visa processing back home. So I'm sorry, one of the charts is for adjustment here, and one of the charts is for visa processing back home. Okay, and you said it was oh, an okay. I, you said it was yeah, an I, you said it was an I one forty. You did. No, uh, I-130. I-130. Okay, so let me tell you what the deal is with I-130. Because I've gone through this with my attorneys. Okay? For I-130s and the F-2A category, if you are in legal status in America, and you have been here for more than 90 days, and in legal status, and you have not overstayed your time, and you are married no. to a permanent resident, adjust your status. No, if I'm, you are, I'm if, the... Uh, if you're out of status, you can't. Th that's not going to help you. No, no, no. My question is that I, I filed a form I one thirty. I'm a green card holder, and my my wife and you know, my my daughter is they are from Brazil. They are at Brazil right okay, now. They're so, overseas. Okay. So then, then so I'm, I want to know how long it's going to take. About, a, about um, another year. It's a year. From about a year, you, right? About a year went from when you file. Okay. So um, and another question, I uh, get paid the cash where I work. And uh, is that going to affect the, um, can I prove in any other way that I can support them? You get a cash award? What do you mean you get a cash award? I get paid a cash, like under the table. Okay, like so, I don't want... so guess what? Okay, you got to pay your taxes in life. All right? Why, I'm sorry? You got to pay taxes. 
All right, I'm, okay. I'm not here to lambast you, but I'm going to lambast you a little bit. You can't ask the U.S. government to give you a benefit and allow you to live here in America and allow you to bring your wife and children here, and then you don't pay for anything. You don't pay taxes. Pay your taxes. Okay. Pay them. Okay? And get an affidavit support from somebody else. But I don't, you know, yeah, you can get an affidavit support from somebody else, and, and, and you can say you don't earn any money, and now you're lying. I live, I live with my mother. Okay, she I pays taxes. I, she she so lives what? all over the time here. So what? You work? You work? Yeah, I work. Okay, yeah. so you have to pay taxes. Just because your mother pays taxes and you don't? You don't? How old are you? I'm 34. Okay, it's time, it's time to not live with your mom anymore. You got to be a man. You're married. You got a kid. Pay your taxes. <laughs> Take responsibility, man. <laughs> what are you laughing at me for? I'm going to laugh at you. You're not paying taxes. <laughs> All right, hold on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Some calls on a work? show? Yeah. Calls on a show says, I don't pay taxes. I live with my mother. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Excuse my language. <laughs> Lisa in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Tough love from Florida. Yeah. Lisa. Hi, how are you? How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. What's going on? Okay. Uh, my question is, I'm in the States now. I'm like eight months with right. my daughter. She's seven year old, but my in 2013 and she had got um approval notice but now my baby father wants to get married to me and he had went in for his interview and um they he had passed his test but they told him they will contact him so what's the best thing for me to do well i don't i don't understand the question your your baby fought t say it again I, I, my I just, baby father yes wants to get married to me now right Right, he went in for his um, interview for nationalization. Right, right. Right, he passed the test, but they told him they will contact him in terms of they need more information from him, okay. which he's, they had mailed him, right. and he sent in the relevant documents that they need. Okay. Right. All right, and now you want to know what he should do? When did he send it back in? Uh, probably like two weeks now. Okay, what were the relevant documents that they needed? They want to know um, if he have any outstanding tax, and did he? which he had a payment plan for. Okay, fine. Then that's fine. All right. So then they should grant him his citizenship as long as he's complying with the payment plan. And uh, you marry him when you feel like it. He's going to become a citizen. And then when he's a citizen, mm -hmm. he's going to file your adjustment. The longer you're married, oh. the better your case is. So you, you can get married now even if he's not a citizen. When he goes, okay. when he goes to swear in... They're going to ask him, has anything changed since we last saw you? And they'll say, yeah, I'm married. Here's the marriage certificate. They'll still swear, man. You're allowed to get married. You don't have to wait on the citizenship. Okay, so right. where, where it comes in with my seven-year-old daughter, um, where how would he go about that where, section of it? Where though? is she? She's here as well. Okay, so when, once he's a citizen, he's going to put in one adjustment application for you and a separate adjustment application for your daughter, two separate applications. Okay. All right? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, let's go to Cindy in Jamaica. Cindy. Cindy. Hello. How are you? Can you hear me? I do. Oh, okay, perfect. All right, so I need some clarification on a paragraph or two I was reading just last night. What? Um, really, the issue is as of August next month, it seems as if I will be... Less than a year away from my priority date, but I still haven't got an approval. Uh, on who sponsored? Who's sponsoring you? Oh, it's an I one thirty. Uh huh. For an unmarried daughter over twenty one. Okay. All right. So, so this is no the, kids. So this is the story. Um, if the priority date becomes current and you've been waiting for six, seven years and still no decision, uh, your parents, not you should be filing or threatening to file what's called a mandamus action, which is a lawsuit against the government for, for denying you the right to come to America when you have every right to as soon as they approve the case. Uh, but until that priority date is current, you just got to wait and hopefully assume that it will get approved shortly. 
Okay, so run that by me one more time, because obviously I'm going to do my research on that next. Mandamus. 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 Is that how it's pronounced? That, that's how it's pronounced, and it's spelled M-A-N-D-A-M-U-S. And it is a uh -huh. lawsuit against the U.S. government to force them to do their government duty. And their government duty is to approve your case in a reasonable amount of time. Now, whether mm -hmm. they approve your case now or in six months from now, it's not going to make any difference because your date is, your date is already set on, as, on a priority date based on when your parents filed for you, and then you'll be on mm -hmm. a waiting list. Once your priority date is reached and they still have not pr uh, approved your case and it's been pending for six, seven years, now they are intentionally or negligently or recklessly, whatever you want to say, delaying mm -hmm. your visa. You're entitled to it and they're delaying it now. That's when you mm -hmm. force the government, you file a lawsuit and force them, uh, have a federal judge force them to make a decision on your case. Interesting. Isn't okay. It? Well, I'm hoping it doesn't have to get to I that. Hope, I hope so, too. Okay. I, but, I mean, do you but have instances solution. of this throughout Every your day. career? Every day. <laughs> oh, you're joking. No, I'm not. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. All right. I don't want to be that apple. Um, okay. So... Is it that what what if it becomes approved instead of a lawsuit? Can I not just file for the gets, permanent residence gets, from the overseas consulate? Yes, of course. But I'm talking about if it doesn't get approved. Okay. Right. No, but yeah, the question the question is if even if it's still not approved by the time my current my priority and date the becomes is you current, you cannot apply for a visa if you don't have an approved visa petition, which is why you would file. Uh, uh huh. All right. Okay then. All right. So then, I mean, they should probably clarify this statement on their website because it says a visa is available to you when your priority date is earlier than the cutoff date shown for the preference category or country of chargeability. Right, right, blah right, blah right, blah. Okay. If this was an easy process, mm -hmm. I'd be selling real estate. And if immigration did what they were supposed to do, I wouldn't have a Bradshaw life. I'd be having a real mm -hmm. estate life. Okay, uh -huh. so, you know, yeah, I mean, you can read off all the websites you want. I'm telling you what the story is. Hold on one second. All right, let's go to Mike in Daytona Beach. Mike. Hello? Yes, what's up? Hey, what's going on? Um, so, I have two questions. One yes. of them is, a friend of mine became a U.S. citizen last year. Um, and while packing away his immigration stuff, he realized that he didn't put his stage name. He's a performing artist. Right. And he didn't put his stage name on the application. Now he's wondering if that's an issue. He didn't put it on which application? Uh, he didn't put it on his N-400 application when he became a citizen. Is he a citizen now? He is since last year. Okay. Don't worry about it. He's a citizen. Okay. Right. Uh, my next question is uh, a friend of mine, another friend, right. um, he has a domestic violence case a few years ago, and he got one year probation. The probation is now up, and he, he wants to renew his green card, and he's also eligible for citizenship. Should uh, he, what was the one year probation for? Uh, I believe domestic violence. Uh, he should not be filing citizenship. Domestic violence is a deportable offense. He should be running to my office to talk to me about it. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So I'll give yes. him your office contact number. Right. Thanks a lot. Okay. Let's go to Joe in Chicago. Joe. Joe. Hello. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good, good. What's going on? Yeah, I have I, I, like two or three questions for you. The first question is that we had like interview, like uh, we had interviewed a week and some days ago, but after the interview, like some days after the interview, my wife went to Texas. She's in Texas, uh, in Texas right now visiting her mom, but she's meant to come back next month by the end of August. So she was wondering if she can be finding a job by the time she's there or if it's going to be a problem she, like since we haven't got a decision from no, the immigration. No, she's allowed, she's allowed, she's allowed to, it's a real marriage. She's allowed to go visit her mom for a couple of weeks. It's no big deal. Yeah, but she's paying, she's asked, she's wondering if she can find a little like a job for like two or three weeks just to make some money for her pocket. Of course. Or it's a problem. No, of course. Oh, she can, right? Yeah. For a couple of weeks, yeah. And come back, of course. Oh, okay. Thank you. And the, okay. the second one is for my friend. She got married uh, last year. Right. On August, but she came with the F1 visa. 
status, uh, like an uh, international Stereo. student. Mm-hmm. But but she got she was out of status like since uh, since August, and she applied for a document last December. So she has interview next month. Uh, uh, it's, 12 uh, one, 30, it's twelve to thirty. It's twelve to twelve to thirty six months to file an adjustment. Um, the government does all sorts of different processing depending on the state you're yeah. processing and mm-hmm. depending on what country you're from. Um, yeah, the question it, is that she has been she hasn't been going to school for it's like okay. For it's okay months because her now. adjustment's pending. It's fine. Yeah, she's fine. She doesn't have to no, face no, any no, no, overstay fine. problem. Nope. Oh, okay. Thank you so you're much. Welcome. All right, let's go to Tim in Carrollton, Maryland. Tim. Yeah. How you doing? How are you? Oh, not bad. Um, I have a question for you. Yes. I got a um, I got a baby mother in Jamaica. You got a. Baby. Who I want to who I want to file a um, fiance um, visa. For, I want to get a fiance visa for her. Okay. But the question is, um, what I really the problem is, um, her mom was a who is a green card holder mm-hmm. has filed I want to for her about um That's three okay. years ago. That's not it a was problem. Approved. It's not a problem. You're allowed to have so, multiple ways to get a green card, whichever way comes in first. It's fine. Yes, but but what I was saying, um, if I go file that fiancé um, visa, does it affect the um, I-130? Does it affect it? Yeah, because you're bringing her here to marry you, and when you marry her, you, she's going to get a green card through you. Yeah, I mean, I mean, by if I when I when I um, when I file that, I mean, if they're going to take the um, the I-130 order system. No, but who cares? She's going to come here quicker <laughs> through you. Yeah, because I, I don't want to go do it, and, um, and she doesn't get through, and then um, I mess that um, I want to already up why from her mom. Why won't she get through? She, 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 you have a child with her. Yeah, I got, I got two kids. Yeah, yeah. I needed two no. kids to come yeah, to yeah, one yeah, six yeah. one eight. Yeah, it's okay. She'll get through. It's obviously gonna, obviously a bona fide marriage. You have two children with her, and yes, uh, and if it does, if the fiance visa doesn't work, she never got married, so it's fine. Oh, she, uh, the, the I want her to still kick in. Of course, yeah. All right. Okay, and. Uh, Okay, that's bad. And how long would that take? From, about from about nine file? to ten months. Hold on. You ne- Come see me. We'll take care of you. Hold on. All right? All right. All right. Let's go to Julianne in New York. Julianne. <coughs> Julianne. <coughs> Julianne. Yes, um, good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm fine. I have a question. Yes. Okay, I, I came here to my husband in 2017, and I got a two-year green card, and it expired the 4th of June, 2019, and I sent him for the 10 year just in in February, in March, and I and they sent me an extension for 18 months from immigration, but my husband tried to abuse me, like calling me words. I he hit me on my breast, a lot of oh. stuff, and he always okay. called the police on me. All right, so this so, is, so, um, so this, all right, you're an abused mm-hmm. spouse. You shouldn't be living with the guy. All right, uh, you called the, he called the police on you, or you called the police on him? I can't hear you clearly. Did you call the police on him? He, I, I report him one time when he hit me on my get, breast, get, and get, they didn't want to it. lock him up, and they didn't lock him up. Lock, I didn't lock let him up. Lock him up. You should have. He lock him up. No one, no one has a right to hit a woman. No one has a right to hit a woman. You should have locked him up. Get an order of protection against him. Kick him out of the house. And you could either convert your, uh, your, your conditions to remove uh, to a waiver case, either based on abuse or if you want to get a divorce. Nobody says, the government doesn't say, I hate to say this guy's name, Donald Trump doesn't even say that you have to stay in an abusive relationship to get a green card. Well, my question is this: um, He, he, he uh, uh, you, Do you think I have to go to for the interview with him? Are they going to send me the green card in the mail? Do you think that you will have an interview, and uh, and you should not be staying in that home with this man, and you should kick him out, get an order of protection, and then, or if you want, come see me tomorrow, and I'll help you do it. You live in New York. I'm in New York, and okay. you will get a green card without him, and you don't have to be abused. 
Yeah, because he's, he's calling the police. He called the police on me two times and said I hit him. And one time he told the police that I said I'm going to kill my own self. All right. And they did want to lock me up so, and he so refused. It, all I'm right. afraid of this man. All right. There's no such thing as calling the police to lock you up because you're going to kill yourself. Okay. I'm going to okay. come and see you. Come see me tomorrow. Hold on. Okay. Okay, sir. Right, Thank on. you. Let's go to Dan in Mesquite, Texas. Dan. Dan. Dan, Hello. how are you? Hey, Brad. What's up? How you doing? Good, what's going on? Um, I'd like to express my profound gratitude to you and Thank the you. Brad family Appreciate for your it. selfless assistance. Appreciate so, it. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me go over to the Brad family. Brad family? Not not my biological yes. family, but still family nevertheless. Cl close to close it. Close to yes. it. <laughs> yes. That's good. Yes, all I right. Mean, I mean, that consists of the first lady, the gorgeous first lady, the uh, bedroom king. Yes, yes you are the first lady. <laughs> yeah, I'll the take. first lady of the show. Yes. Hey, oh, I'll uh, take it. That's true. I am yes. technically the And is what? I'm, I'm talking to you what you are. I'm, I'm my Nigerian brother. You're, hey. You're, you're, hey. All right. <laughs> all right, Dan, what's going on? Okay, um, Brad, I have a, a, let me just go straight to the point. I have a crazy wife who treats me like a slave. She, treats, she threatens me with the solution of marriage daily, every time, at every little argument. She throws, she flung the, the solution papers on my face, and it's really a, a big abuse, even though we live in a, in a very legitimate and a bona fide marriage. Now, is it possible for her to go to dissolve the marriage behind my back without me knowing? It's possible. It wouldn't be a, a legal divorce, but it's possible unless you don't want... I mean, it would be a legal divorce. It would be, it would be a divorce that you would be able to reopen. But yeah, when you get a divorce, the law requires... So if she does it right, she follows the law, and this is in all 50 states, the law requires uh, the plaintiff, who would be your wife, to serve you personally with papers to show that you're getting divorced. Uh, sometimes people do it behind people's backs and they forge stuff, but she would be committing some sort of forgery if she did it behind your back. So uh, if, she, if she did, even though we live together, we live in a very legitimate marriage, and she, she did it when she was mad. Do you have a two-year green did, card? What are you concerned about, your immigration status? Yeah, I, okay. I have a, we have a two-year green okay. card. So this is, what, this, is, this is what I just told the young lady, Julianne, who was being abused by her spouse. And you're, you're, tell, you're calling up and saying the same thing in a different way, but it's still abuse. Nobody says, if you have a two-year green card, nobody says you have to be in an abusive, unhappy marriage. So let her divorce you. She'll be doing you a favor. And then when you are divorced, you can file to remove the conditions of your permanent residence on your own, and you prove two things. Here's my divorce, and here's proof we live together. And you just told me you all, you'll have all of that anyway. So why be unhappy? Mm -hmm. Be happy. Yeah. What is that song? Okay. Don't, Stay, worry. don't worry, be happy. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, be happy. I, I, was, I can't even... Okay? okay. I, I, All right, hold okay. on one second. Don't worry, be happy. Be happy. Right, that, that should be the theme song for... A, that should be the theme song for us. Right. Ex except right. that isn't that Bismarck Key, and I don't think we can afford no, Bismarck Key. No, it's not Bismarck Key. It's... Um, That's the old school... Old like, school song in the 80s. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, some guy from the eighties. He was a, he was like Good a one-hit wonder, but he was a one-hit wonder, but he he got like really, made a lot of money on that. Song. Bobby Very McFerrin. Bobby McFerrin. Thank right, you. Right. God, I was that was. All good. right. We should have asked Key, DJ Killer Buzz. He would have known that. <laughs> Sophia in Brooklyn. Hey, Brad. How are, how are you? you? How you doing? Pretty good. Hanging in there. What's going on? Um, my question is, um, my my I I. I have a VAWA case pending mm -hmm. to which I've been approved. Um, they sent me an approval about a little over five months now. Great. But my um, my I-485, um, the last thing I heard was over a year now, back in last June, they did my fingerprint review. So, of course, you know, it went in before then. So, so but Sophia, I haven't heard let, anything. Let me ask you a question. You filed your VAWA and your adjustment at the same time? They were filed, um, the I-350 was sent in first, and then the I-485 okay. and the working permit and whatnot was sent in about three, four months after. Why? <laughs> because somebody referred me to a, a legal... All right, okay. I don't know, All right so, when, when, so how, long is, how long has your adjustment been pending? 
My adjustment of status was sent in from over a year now. Over a year. And when was the I-360 mm -hmm. approved? 389 days ago, I got the last response from them that when they was, were... When uh, was, when was the I-360 approved again? The I-360 was approved since five five months ago, but I haven't heard anything from them since. Right. Well, um, well, you have two choices. You can wait or you can file a mandamus. You're in mandamus territory now. So um, my question is, should I have heard something from them since the time that I got the approval notice? My, my answer is this. In normal times, the answer is yes, you should have heard. But this is not normal times, and immigration doesn't act yeah. normal right now. And they're delaying everybody uh -huh. for years and years, literally. So that's why yeah, yeah. we are inundated with mandamus cases. Okay? Because and, I'm and almost sure. I, yeah, I, heard, I heard from a friend of mine that usually they would have moved your case to the local office. I right. don't know how. They haven't, if, they haven't even done, if they haven't even done that, you are far away still. Oh. All right. Okay. So come okay. see me. Hold on one second. Come see me because you went to a lady who didn't know what she was doing to begin with. So hold on. All right. Okay. All right. Let's go to Vikram in Summit, New Jersey. Vikram. Vikram. Hey, uh, Brad. How, How are, you? are you? Good, good. What's going on? The thing is, uh, one month ago, my I-360 got approved. Mm -hmm. And uh, two weeks ago, I went to the immigration court. The judge asked me to bring the I-484 application and supporting documents. He gave me the list of documents. Right. And uh, this month ending 31st, he gave me the master hearing. Okay. So once I filed there, like I-485, how long does it take to get the green card? About a year. Huh? One year. One year? Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 once uh, to get the citizenship, how many years I need to wait? You're basing this on abuse from a U.S. citizen? Yes. Three years yes. after you get your green card. Okay. All right. And, uh, yeah, and one more question. Yes. Uh, uh, they, uh, the, they, I didn't uh, send to the USCIS my I-485. Uh, two weeks ago, when I went there in the court, he asked me to bring the I-485 to the court. All right. Do well, I need to send the... You need you need to file it. You need to file it with USCIS with permission from the judge, and then the judge will hold off on further processing your deportation case till USCIS makes a decision. Or sometimes, going to or the sometimes the judge says, "I'll do the adjustment in court myself." I'm not sure because I'm not there in the court, so I don't know what the judge he said. said. Uh, he said he's just a status. Don't you have a, Don't you have a lawyer representing you? He said, you know, you don't need a company, you come by, you come by yourself. You all, told right, me I, all right, you need a lawyer. Hold on one second, all right? Because I don't know what he said to you. Because you, there's two ways to do it, all right? There are two ways to do it. You can file an adjustment at Federal Plaza, or you're in New Jersey, huh? in Newark, or you, no. can file, you can file the adjustment directly with the court. I don't know which way he asked it, and maybe, perhaps, because you don't have a lawyer, usually... He says, okay, lawyer, 14 days, just file it and send proof that you filed it. But probably because you don't have a lawyer, he said, bring the adjustment next time to court. This is my guess. Let me look at it, make sure you're doing it right, and then I'm going to tell you to file it. So you're just yes, delaying yes, yourself. Correct. So you're probably just delaying yourself. All right, but if you want a lawyer, you probably get it faster. Hold on. Let's go to Manuela in Newark. Manuela. Hi. Um my father is here on B1, B2 visa till October. I want to know when I can adjust his status. Uh, when did he get here? Um, April, uh, May. May what? Uh, this year. May what? May 1st. May 1st. Uh, May 1st. All right, so May, June, July. You're a U.S. citizen? Yes. Okay. Uh, and uh, you're over 21? Yes. All right. Uh, anytime after August 2nd. After August, I think. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's go to Layla in Raleigh, North Carolina. Layla. Layla. Hello. How are you? Yes, sir. How are you doing? I am fine. Thank you. And you? Wonderful. Actually, not so wonderful. I'm a little sick. Yes. If you see thank you so much for your, your help, everybody. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. 
uh, please, I have a question. Yes. I am green card holder for uh -huh. 10 years. Right. And I have interview for citizenship uh, next month. Great. And I applied for uh, Medicaid uh, for pregnancy and uh, a week program, but I canceled uh, Medicaid it's, it's, for pregnancy. It's, it's okay. But I, no, I still okay. have a week program. It's okay. It's okay. You, you don't have to have any poverty guidelines to become a citizen. Go, go uh, get what you need. No problem. You're, you're in, no problem. You're entitled to benefits like anybody else. Oh, thank you so much you're because I was worried no, if this is no, no, uh, no, uh, public charge. No, there's no public charge for citizenship. Uh, thank you so much. All thank right. you. You're thank very you. Welcome. All thank right. you for and, your, and all then, your and time. And then if you, you. give birth and you need Medicaid, you do good it. Day. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Where are you from, Leila? Thank you. Where are you from? I am Moroccan. Moroccan. Ooh. Okay, very yes. nice. I was in Morocco two years ago. I was in Fez, oh. Marrakesh, I, the, oh. the Berber Mountains, the Atlas Mountains oh. where the Berbers live. <laughs> and oh, that's good. Did you like it over there? Yes, it was great. I have lots of pictures. Oh. I enjoyed it myself. I wish one day I will be over there. You come and visit I me. I will, thank you. I make you a tourist. I appreciate it. Thank you. Oh. All right, thank you. All right, take care. You're welcome. All right, Thank all you. Right. I'm invited everywhere. Personal right. tour guide in Morocco. Yes. That's so nice. I'm invited everywhere. Every day people invite me all over the world. That's actually true. Yes. Yeah. All over the world. Lucky you. Yes. Lucky <laughs> me is right. Just waiting. So um, uh, a while back, um, we had a client by the name of Tracy Reed. Uh, she got her green card. Now, Tracy shared her immigration journey with us and how obtaining her green card has helped her in all aspects of her life especially as an entrepreneur. She owns a business, I believe, in Brooklyn. Let's watch. This is Tracy Reed. I'm the owner for Lionheart Herbs and Spices. I've been in business for the last 18 years. My parents are from Jamaica. I was born in London, England, and raised in Toronto, Canada. I came to the United States in 1999 to start my own business. When I got here, I was very enthusiastic because I knew New York was already culturally diverse and very strong. Not having a green card posed a lot of different challenges. Even though I came with a lot of ambition and motivation to start my own business, there was a lot of store rentals, but because I didn't have a, a strong credit history, it was very difficult. I had acquired a tax ID number from the government in which I used to conduct my business. So I came across the store and at that time, the owner agreed to rent me this premises for commercial purposes and I was very um, excited. You know, I had my tax ID number. When I got the store in July, everything seemed to be fine, the ideal space. By the first winter, I realized that everything wasn't so great because one day I went to flush the toilet on a cold day in January and the toilet was frozen as ice. Not only that the toilet wouldn't flush, that the pipe was making a lot and water was coming out all over. So I called him and he was like, oh my gosh, you busted my pipes. Oh my God, this doesn't look like it's gonna work out. Maybe you need to find another location. You just got here. Well, as time went on and every time it got cold, the pipes would bust. I did a lot of repairs even though it was his responsibility because I was trying not to get in too much tension with him or get on his bad side because we were also coming up to our first lease, which was the three year lease. And I continued to, um, and, and be in the space and we went at it all the time because he was not willing to give me any heat and I had to be plugging in heaters. I had to move the store. So my challenge was how can I get another space and I don't have the proper documents that is required for me to move from there and I had already established a certain amount of clientele in the space. So not having a green card really kind of hindered me from being able to move forward on that level. I started pursuing immigration lawyers. I spent um, over $5,000. I continued to pursue figuring who could I trust, what, what firms were really going to be um, somebody that's going to really get me results. I needed to be able to um, be in a better standing situation. I was very, I don't know, I guess very intimidated by the judicial system as far as taking him to court to force him to give me plumbing and heating and stuff like that because they probably would have asked me for I, a lot IDs and stuff in order to fill out the court forms. Some of the setbacks was my inability to travel, to be more attentive to my parents in Jamaica, 
because they were retirees and they were, I was like, I'm the only child. So I wasn't able to really go down there and deal with their affairs and make sure they were okay. So many times I had to like buy them tickets to come to New York, to come and see me, be able to buy them things and send them back home, see that they were okay, that they would get to see my son. So then eventually I finally found Spar and Bernstein. Somebody had told me they heard about it on the radio. And so I said, okay, let me go find out what this is all about. I did a consultation and they explained to me how it works. It took some time, but I knew it's something I had to do. In the passage of processing, my mother got very ill, so I couldn't I couldn't leave automatically. I had to wait, and during the time of waiting, she transcended, so I didn't get a chance to actually see her before she passed, but I was able to travel to go and um, prepare for her final resting place, and I uh, did that last year. But at present, since then, I got my card. I'm very grateful to be in America and to have a business in this country for that many years. I didn't realize how rough it could really be for somebody outside of the United States to come here and even be a citizen of, um, you know, uh, international countries and still go through some serious, serious tribulations. And some of the things I went through with my landlord really opened my eyes because I said, wow, if I'm running a business and I'm going through these struggles, can you imagine people who are just trying to survive in America without a green card and not even having a business, but just trying to get a job or job conditions, working conditions? It must be really like triple hard, you know? out there because I'm working for myself. So, you know, I can't imagine what it would be like for somebody who had to, you know, take a job and be under such severe, you know, abusive conditions. So coming to America has really opened my eyes and it's helped me to be a stronger person. And I'm hoping that I can pursue my dreams as a, you know, as a recording artist and to um, get, and a lot of that's in my album. The songs that I write reflect a lot of what I've been through for my years here. Now it seems more reachable because um, I think I, I'm able to be more mobile and to travel around and that people will take me more seriously because I, I'm able to leave out the United States and re-enter and go to different parts of the world. My dream is to have my first album as a recording artist completed and out for the world to hear parts of my journey to inspire and motivate a lot of people that probably could relate to this journey and to also tell a lot of people, regardless of what the crisis or circumstances and challenges are, stand firm in your faith, you know, and to um, be consistent and determined. I'm going into my 19th year at my new location at 782 Nostrand Avenue. And um, I'm truly grateful to still be a part of this neighborhood and this community. And once again, thanks to Sparns Bernstein, who's been very diligently helping me acquire my green card, which I now do have. I'll be able to continue to pursue my ambitions as a recording artist, as a mom, as a store owner, as a community advocate. So, you know, I'm looking forward to putting my album together and um, just being able to get things on a different level. Okay, and special announcement before we go to social media check-in. We're going to be doing a pop-up on Friday, so every single social media question that does not get answered in the next couple of days is going to get answered in that pop-up. So make sure you guys subscribe. You guys have to subscribe and press that, bu that bell to know when we're going to come on. So subscribe on YouTube like that. Just press that little red rectangle and also on Facebook, we will be showing the pop-up on Facebook as well. So make sure you press the notifications for that so you can get notified when we pop up. That's right. So when we pop up, just so you know, we don't get to all your social media questions today and we don't get it into the speed round, come watch us Friday. I promise you every question asked on our show will be answered in our pop-up on Friday. And with that, Belgium Kim, and Jonathan Yo-Yo Elias, we gotta do something we like to call social media check-in. Our very first question from 
Prosper, and we know that Prosper is a smart individual because Prosper joined the Brad Squad, and that's why Prosper is getting their question answered wow. first. Uh, asking for a friend by I-290B got relocated from the Administrative Appeals Office back to the original office that made the previous decision. According to the case status, they said they will mail me their decision and mail me if they need anything from me. How long is this whole process going to take and what does it actually signify? Well, it signifies that, that they reopened your case, whether or not uh, you're going to get a proper decision. I have no idea how long will it be. I don't know. But it's positive. That's for sure. All right. There Our you are. One, right. Our second one comes from another Brad Squad member who joined the group. Mm -hmm. That's why you get your second question. All right. So now my question is, if you previously sponsor a spouse who entered an N or 9N, a CR, uh, CR1, but you find out that they were scamming you just to get entry so you never filed the I-751, then divorced them. Took forever since they ran off. What are your uh, chances of filing a K-1 for a fiancé? Excellent. Okay, and uh, preferred this over CR1, so can, uh, can see them here and avoid past mistakes. Definitely not like the ex. But so they want, he wants to live with the person for 90 days. Uh, it's called 90 Day Fiance Television Show, mm -hmm. and then decide whether or not to get married. Right. So how like, li likely is the USCIS to give trouble because of that? Mm, very little. As long no. as, it's a, as long as he can prove he married in good faith, it's all about. Okay. So for your information, haven't seen the ex in two years, just don't want to spend uh, this mm -hmm. money and don't, deny, don't worry get about denied. The ex. Move on with life. Cool. Little Caramel Princess said, I'm a member of the Brad Squad, and I'm wondering if you can answer my questions. We okay. can't. Oh, that's the same pe person. No, that's the exact same question we just had. Oh. oh, you went everywhere. I love it. So, Meet said, my status for an I-765 change to new card is being produced today. How long will it actually take for the card to get here? I already have a job offer, and they're asking me to join on July the 22nd. Can I go ahead and go, or should I wait to get the actual card? Go work. You're a permanent resident, and you should get it shortly. All right, uh, Leah saying, hello guys, can someone with an expired J-1 visa without the two home residency rule adjust her status freely? It's very important to me because, uh, please Brad, I need yes, to know that. Yes, yes, the answer is yes. All right. Ale uh, sorry, a Sexy Shan said, if I file a VAWA in February of 2019, how long for the work permit or social? Uh, six months from when you file. Jemima wants to know how long does it take to file for your siblings? 15 years. Rookie said, how soon can one get a response from filing an urgent need to travel for an I-131 to attend a custody hearing? The children are all citizens and one of the parent, the citizen is deceased. You're gonna to need to go down to the local office and speak to somebody. They're not gonna just give it to you by letter form. Philip Ross saying, if, if an American citizen parent with kids born abroad don't fill out the N-600 form when the kids meet the requirements for citizenship and the kids get deported, can they return to the USA? Yes, if they're citizens, they should never have been deported in the first place. And you don't lose your citizenship simply because the citizen parent didn't file for the N-600. You're a citizen because the son came up and you have all those requirements met. You just don't have proof you're a citizen. So I don't know what Philip means by this, but the next line, he just put felony. If a That's child got, got deported, your kid got deported for a felony, but he was in fact a U.S. citizen, you'll be back in two weeks. Gotcha. If that means a lawyer. Yashika, our Brad Squad hey. spotlight of the day, said on Green June, Eyes. Uh, <laughs> Green Eye Yashika. Yeah, Green, Green Eye Yashika. <laughs> <laughs> said on June 21st. I like, it's like medical marijuana Sam, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yashika said on June 21st, it said that my I-45 was ready to be scheduled for an interview about how about how long will that take? And I'm still waiting it's on my anywhere, work permit. It's anywhere from 12 months to 36 months start to finish. So just because they say it's ready to be scheduled doesn't mean, ready to be scheduled doesn't mean it will be scheduled immediately. Those are two different words. Ready to be scheduled is it's ready to be scheduled. We'll do it whenever we feel like it in the next 12 to 36 months. All right, Tiffany Davis says, uh, have you heard anything about the special immigrant juvenile status in NYC for people 18 to 21 years old? You should be able to do it. You should be able to do it. JB said, how can you prove a bona fide marriage if your spouse is living in another country due to a visa overstay? Uh, you communicate with each other. You go and visit her. You send money. 
Safi saying, uh, what happened after you file, or what happens after you file I-360 uh, pending of two years and seven months? Uh, what happens is you got a problem, you should see a lawyer. Sophia said, I was giving a 221 document I was asked to uh, and I was asked to submit court documents. I told them I was arrested and I really wasn't when asked, uh, and now when asked, what do I do? What do you mean you said you were arrested and you weren't? It's... 221 means whatever 220, there's all 221A, 221G, right. all the way through G. Uh -huh. And it's all just inadmissibility. You can't get a green card, you can't get a visa because of X, Y, Z. So she said, I was arrested and they said, okay, send me the court documents. And now she's saying she wasn't. So in that packet that they said, send the court documents, you will now have to write an affidavit why you were not arrested, why you misunderstood the question, you didn't purposely lie, and I got nothing to show you, if that's in fact the facts. All right, Leanna J saying, hey Brad, if a person is married in Jamaica and moves to the United States and gets married to adjust their status, is it gonna affect them getting their green card? <laughs> No, you're gonna get a green card. Right. Okay. Even if you're already married to another human in Jamaica? Oh, you're married. Wait. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Because wait, 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 wait. they're married in Jamaica and then they come to the married. U.S. and get married. Back that up. Woo! Whoa! Why? I'm gonna sweat on that one. Right. Uh, I just thought you got married in Jamaica, you're now here in the U.S., you'd like to adjust. I'm like, yeah, go, go for it. No. no, you can't adjust as a bigamist. Okay, even the Mormon church doesn't allow bigamy anymore. That's true. Right. All right, no bigamy. <laughs> It's like it's like not filing your taxes. It's a big okay. no -no. So you have to get <laughs> divorced no -no. in Jamaica first, and then. Well, if you, if you, you can get divorced in America, okay, on a Jamaican marriage, as long as you qualify to go into a court in America. Like for example, in New York, if you were living in New York for two years, even undocumented, and you got married in another country, Jamaica, Morocco, mm -hmm. wherever, Nigeria, mm -hmm. as long as you have physical presence here for two years, you can do your divorce here even though you were married in a totally other country. Oh. Okay, now other states are different jurisdictions. What are you looking at, Yavin? Um, our little thing to see if the <laughs> AC is on. I was about to call it the name. <laughs> but I did. This yeah, is how you know that the AC that. is on. Yeah. When it moves. It's not moving. It's moving a little bit. Yeah, it is. It's mo not moving. <laughs> it yeah, is. It. Not moving. <laughs> no wonder it's hot. <laughs> Jill goes, my hot. You see, there's the water coming down the side of my face. Okay, but that's because you are a sick mess, Brad. Yeah, I that's am a not sick because mess. it's warm in here. I am a sick mess right now. <laughs> I love you very much. That doesn't right, stay away. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> you know what? I, yeah, I, I am. I am a little sick. I have a cold. Yeah. I don't know if anybody hears. And Kim, yeah, of course, going off topic right now, 100%. says I remember my first week on the job. 100. This when, is a real story. When Kim was her first week at the job. <laughs> Yes. And uh, we week. were on the radio yes. before we were on Facebook, before on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And Kim was, I don't, we, what was your job there at that point? I was a social media strategist. Social media strategist. You were, you were just coming on the radio just to BS with just me. Just to BS But with you weren't answering yeah. questions. No, there I was were, doing There were nothing. no questions on social media at the time. No. You were just the sidekick. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Okay, so Kim would come on, and then she came in sick one day, and I stopped the whole radio show live and said, get out, I don't want to get sick, right? Yeah, like, chase me out, chase me yeah. out with Lysol. <laughs> like, live on the radio. So it was yeah. 9 o'clock in the morning, yes. I just got into the office, and Brad oh. looks at me and he's like, go home, you look awful, yeah, don't yeah, be here. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm not kidding, I, I don't want your that. germs. I, <laughs> I got kicked out of the studio before. Yeah, we, yeah right. Brad does not play with germs. But, but, but you don't kick me out. But we're not allowed to, well, Brad. Well, you sign our checks. Right. <laughs> and, you can't, you can't do the show without me. We can't answer can't any of the show, questions. You can't do the show without That's me. True. This right, next right. one from Sandy the only, would the be only really thing, The only thing you would say is, hi, everybody. Right. <laughs> Tell people to share, and here's our comments of the day. <laughs> We've got some schmooze for you. Yes. <laughs> we can't explain the implication right, of any right, of it, though. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's continue. We've got a question from Sandy who said, I was arrested in 2014, uh, and in 2015, I received the disposition. The uh, What I was arrested for was assault and battery with a dangerous weapon, and there was a continuation without finding, with no condition, and an A and B guilty file. The probation ended in 2017, and then I removed the conditions on my two-year green card. Now I'm about to apply for my citizenship, can I? What state was this? It doesn't say the state that it was in. All right, because I, 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 what I'm, what I'm kind of understanding, yeah, is that he got arrested, mm -hmm. and they said go do some probationary stuff. Right. We're not going to find you guilty of anything. Right. And if you do this probationary stuff and you're not guilty, 
and you and you, you don't do anything else, and you you know you don't you're a good person, and you follow all our rules. We're just going to drop the charges when you're done. That's what it sounds like to me. And then it, he, he was found not guilty, and under immigration law, that is not a crime. You still have to file your citizenship. You still have to admit that you were arrested. And based on what I'm hearing, but I would like to see the disposition. I don't know what state this was in. My guess is that it sounds like some sort of diversionary program that he went into. He was not found guilty, and he should be able to become a citizen, but I'm saying that with a grain of salt. Massachusetts. Okay, I still need to see the disposition. Yeah. But it sounds like he, Massachusetts does have a diversionary program, so that's what I, it sounds like to me. Okay. All right. Maho P saying, hey, my U.S. citizen wife is abusing me in every way possible. Oh. I filed an I-130 a year ago, received EAD with advanced parole. I want to file a VAWA and divorce her. Do I have to file again for my EAD and no, parole? No, no. Just file the VAWA yourself, and then when you get the interview for the adjustment, show up yourself with proof that you have uh, a VAWA pending. And does the current EAD with parole, uh, yes, is it valid it. and carried over to the VAWA? Yes, VAWA? Yes. We've got our next question from Rita, who, sorry, Rita says, my husband and I applied for asylum in February of 2019, and we did biometrics in March. When should we expect the interview and work permit? Uh, work permit about six months, interview in 12 to 24 months. All right, A. Jones wants to know if they should be concerned because it's been eight months and has not received the EAD yet. Yes. Uh, I have Angela said, I've got a question. If someone doesn't want to sign a divorce, if you go ahead and do it yourself, how long does it take and how much does it cost and how can you do it all by yourself? Uh, well, I don't know what state you're in and every state's different, but there's no requirement that you have to sign a divorce. So for example, that, that went out a long time ago. Okay, all the law requires in all 50 states is that your spouse know that there is a divorce happening. So how do you do that? You can bring a piece of paper to your spouse and have your spouse sign it. I know there's a divorce happening. Or you can just hire a process server, hand them a piece of paper. Guess what? You got to show up in court in 20 or 30 days or whatever with an answer or this divorce is going without you. Now, spouse could drop it on the floor, rip it up, throw it back in the process server's face. Who cares? You served them. End the story. You'll get divorced. All right, we have one from May Ray saying, my brother filed for my sister in 2006. It was approved and a visa became available this June. Unfortunately, she passed away May 30th this year. Can her 25-year-old daughter who was an, uh, on it obtain a visa? Where's the 25-year-old daughter? If the 25-year-old daughter is in the United States, the answer is yes, outside of the U.S., no. Mm. Damn, I was hoping to get that one. What? I was hoping to get this this one other question in, but I've got one more from Sparta Boss. Okay. Sparta Boss said, uh, my husband filed for me and I'm living in Jamaica and it's been one year and three months. My case was approved and it's reached the NVC and it's saying that it's at the final stage processing. Uh, what does that mean and about how long until I get the interview? Final stage means final stage. And who sponsored? Husband. Uh, and it's at the National Visa Center still? Yes. Uh, hopefully the National Visa Center will send it, where is she, Jamaica? Yes. Hopefully they'll send it to Jamaica shortly, and from whenever they send it to Jamaica shortly, about 90 days. Awesome. All right. And with that, shortly in the past. <laughs> yeah. In the, short, in the short past time. Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, Jonathan went out on the streets to test an unsuspecting couple Ooh. from Toronto, Canada about whether or not they would pass a Stokes interview. A marriage interview uh, gave them typical questions, typical mm -hmm. of what a husband and wife or a same-sex partner, same-sex homosexual, or I guess a same-sex marriage mm -hmm. uh, couple would face at immigration. Mm -hmm. They may separate you in two different rooms. They may ask the one spouse 300 questions and compare the answers to the other spouse 300 questions they don't hear. We do this on the street. Let's see how they did. What's up, Brad Squad? It's your boy, Jonathan Elias, out here on the streets of New York. And you already know what time it is. It's time for Bradified Marriage. I'm going to find a lucky couple and give them the Stokes interview. You guys already know, in order to get your citizenship here, they're going to give you an interview just to make sure it's a bona fide marriage. And we want to prepare you for them. All right, now let's go get our couple.
All right, guys, I got my new friends over here. What's your name? Emmett. And Adelaide. And this couple's from Toronto. Give them some love. Now, are you guys ready for the bratified marriage? I think so. Yeah. All right, so I'm so. going to send you back. I'm going to ask him some questions, OK? Yeah. <laughs> All right, now first question. What are you allergic to? <laughs> She's never going to know this. We haven't <laughs> talked about it. Cephalosporin. It's like a type of medicine, but I haven't. It's since I was a baby, oh, you know. Oh, see. And what is she allergic to? Nothing. Oh, okay. Yeah. What are you allergic to? Nothing. And what is he allergic to? Nothing. Okay. Now, what was your nickname as a child? Huh. <laughs> I might not know that. That's a. Yeah, other than the mean ones, you know? Damn. Oh, no. <laughs> no. And how about his nickname as a child? Oh, I don't know. His friends call him Bemmet now, but I don't know what it was as a kid. Mm. I don't know if I really had like a lasting nickname. Emmett sort of was like the only name. I was the only Emmett, so okay. people just stuck with that. You okay. Know? Yeah. And how about her nickname? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> what was your nickname as a child? Um, Addie or Adelaide Marmalade. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> now, what is your favorite ice cream flavor? Mint chocolate chip. Ooh, yeah. That's good. And what's his favorite? Mint chocolate chip. Ah, all right. And what is hers? <laughs> oh, wow. I'm going to guess like something with coconut, but again, I'm guessing, I got to say. That's great. <laughs> all right. Now, what's your favorite ice cream flavor? Oreo. Okay. What's your favorite movie? <laughs> I got a lot of favorite movies. I'm gonna go with Pet Cemetery, but the old one. Oh, the old one. one. I knew, I knew it was the old one. one. Yeah. Gotta go with the classic. The classic mm -hmm. How about his favorite movie? Oh my God! Um, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Ooh, that was my movie too. Yeah. And how about her favorite movie? Her favorite movie. I'm gonna say Cat Baloo. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. What's your favorite movie? 10 things I hate about you, or cat no cat blue. All right. Do you have any phobias? And if so, what is it? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I definitely have some phobias. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go with snakes, because we just saw some guys holding these giant snakes on the Brooklyn Bridge, so okay, that's fresh in my mind. Right. There you go. And how about for him? He's not big on snakes. Okay. Mm-hmm, all right. Oh, okay, and how about for her? Uh, she's pretty brave. She's not scared of a lot, I don't think. Oh. Um, yeah, you know what? I'm going to say nothing. Okay. I think she's afraid of nothing. All right. Okay. I like that. That's a safe answer right there. All right. Do you have any phobias? And if so, what? Uh, I don't like revolving doors. <laughs> no, that's not a phobia. Yeah. No, I don't think so. So no phobias. Okay. All right. Now, where did you take your first picture together? We were we were lying in my bed and we had face masks on. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna ask any yeah, further yeah. questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and I love that answer. <laughs> so where did you take your first picture together? Oh, okay. This is a weird one um, because the first picture of us is like, well, there's like an, an illustration somebody did at a bar, and then there's like a selfie we took with like face masks on, like in his bedroom. Okay. <laughs> Until like this weekend, there were no other, no other record that we'd ever been in the same place together. Are you That's serious? <laughs> and look at you guys now doing a whole Stokes interview. Yeah. <laughs> and last one, what's your favorite holiday? I think Christmas. I'm going to go with Christmas. Me too. And what's hers? I think Halloween. Ooh, I like that. All right. You know? Yeah, spooky. I like it. What is your favorite holiday? Christmas. Okay, and what's his favorite holiday? Christmas. All right. Now let's bring him. Right. All right. Now, what is he allergic to? One, two, three. Nothing. Cephalosporin. What? Yeah, that's the thing. What? <laughs> Not since I was a little baby. <laughs> so I've never talked about it. So you have no reason to know that. Well, so baby, what are you allergic to? Cephalosporin. That's not a real thing. It's a type of medicine or something. <laughs> I don't even know. On the count of three, what is she allergic to? One, two, three. Nothing. Nothing. There we go. Okay. All right. You feeling good so far? Oh, Confident. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> All right, on the count of three, what was his nickname as a child? One, two, three. 
<laughs> I don't Emmett. know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what I said. I, I was the only Emmett, so that was the only thing there I had. Go. So go. he did say that. Yeah. On the count of three, what was her nickname? One, two, three. Addy? Oh, of course. Wait, wait, I mean, wait, I always wait, think wait, that. Wait. Oh, yeah. I actually thought of that over there, and I was like, she's not going to tell him that. No way. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta tell everything. That's true. Guess? No, I oh. couldn't think of anything. I don't know. <laughs> now, on the count of three, what's his favorite ice cream flavor? One, two, three. Mint, Mint chocolate, chocolate chip. chip. There we go. This deserves a this yeah. deserves a little peck on the cheek. Yes, <laughs> that was real cute. All right, on the count of three, what's her favorite oh, yeah. <laughs> ice cream flavor? Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Oreo. Oh, of course. I should have known. Yeah. Maybe yeah. Yeah, <laughs> See? should have known. All right, all right. Now on the count of three, what's his favorite movie? One, two, three. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. I didn't think of that one. That's a great. Is it, one. Are we talking about the first one? The first live action one. You yes, know. yes. With April and all that. That was my favorite. The it's whole great. thing. Yeah, on the count of three, what's her favorite movie? Cat, Cat Baloo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, on the count of three, what's his phobia? One, two, three. Snakes. There you go. Okay. On the count of three, what's her phobia? One, two, three. Nothing. Yeah, I said maybe revolving doors. <laughs> but then, what? <laughs> but then she said nothing at, after yeah. because that's not really a phobia. No. <laughs> All right. Now, uh... <laughs> This one. On the count of three, <laughs> your first place you guys took a picture together. One, two, three. With the face Lying mask. in my bed yeah. with the face mask. <laughs> <laughs> I told him I don't I'm not gonna ask any more questions. But she gave the background story, yeah, so <laughs> nice Sunday morning. You know. There you go. Now, on the count of three, what's his favorite holiday? One, two, three. Christmas. Okay, on the count of three, what's her favorite holiday? One, two, three. Halloween. Oh, what? I mean, everybody likes Christmas, but, you know. All right, there you have it, my lovely couple from Toronto. I don't know if they really would have passed the interview, but you could tell they are definitely a fun-loving couple. All right, what did you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Brad, what did you think? Did they pass or not? Back to the studio. I think they passed. Yeah? Yes. Oh. I didn't expect I you to say passed. that. I didn't either. No. I think they passed. They were an awesome couple, though. Yeah. They were fun. <laughs> yeah, I think they passed. All yeah. right. Julian, the TriCaster guy, give me six minutes. Uh-oh. 25 uh -oh. questions. Uh -oh. Okay. All right. Jenny from the cubicle said she was in the back stretching <laughs> with her arms. <laughs> Is she... All right, she was, she was uh, doing some calisthenics, ready to pop up at any this, moment. This has gotten a lot harder for me to uh, read these questions and don't not look, laugh. Don't time. look at Jenny. That, uh, that's You just impossible. have to be stone-faced. But I mean, no, you, you, we kind of have to look at Jenny because now she keeps score. Uh, I have to see number 17. Oh, 17 is I my favorite. Now, 17. 17 is when she's rolling. In yeah, the I rolling. have to see it. The All rolling right. is by far my favorite. Don't laugh. I want Brad Squad to tell us which Jay Lish, which right, because, Jenny from the Cuba Because, Cuba because Guinness favorite. Book is watching tonight. <laughs> yes. yes. Guinness Book is watching tonight. They said they were going to watch tonight, so don't screw this up. All That's right. right. All right, you ready? Let's go. Davi said my friend recently filed his I-751 to remove the conditions on his green card, but his wife wants a divorce. How could the divorce affect the pending petition? Uh, if you remove the conditions and you divorce and you can prove it was a real marriage, you get a green card anyway. Joy said my husband died three months ago. He was a citizen. We're married. Is there any way I can still put in my paperwork and file for my green card? Yes, it's a widow petition. Carolyn said, I get food stamps and I'm on Mega Decade. No income at this time. I'm about to file the I-864, but I have a sponsor who is well over the poverty line. Is that going to pass for approval? Uh, it should, but they're going to take into effect that you uh, take uh, government assistance. It could be a problem. Though. Arlene wants to know, can you let me know what month is USCIS working on the, for this I-751? My sister's I-751 is pending for 420 days. Uh, if it's more than 18 months, call me. Kahai Kahai said, what kind of disease can allow you to fail your physical? Tuberculosis. GT, Indian uh, national living in U.S. single, filed em uh, employment based AOS, not family based, got an EAD card. Should I file the H1B extension as backup expires next month? EB3 priority date is October th 2009. Um, I, you shouldn't have to unless you think you're going to have a problem with your adjustment. 
Messiah said, I came to the state with finance fiance visa, got married a week after, filed and got my work permit. Six months later, went for an interview in March. My lawyer said I should wait 90 days uh, before I sue. Is that right? It's 120 days. Shady Green says, is there any news about the Supreme Court Pieria uh, about notices to appear? Uh, there is there is news um, that Pereira, Pereira, when they said that you didn't get you didn't if you didn't give the date you don't get proper notice. Uh, it's a lot complicated. Come see me on that particular case. Joel Edney said he came from Haiti when he was three. My friend came from Haiti when he was three years old. Uh, came with a B1, B2 visa, and his parents' asylum case was denied uh, because his parents did not show to USCIS enough evidence to show that they were persecuted in Haiti. Uh, then there was a misrepresentation by the family attorney and not enough political evidence to support the asylum case. What can he now do? Where is he now? Um, it, I think he's still here. He's Let him come. The first thing you got to do is uh, come see me. Let me review all of this. I have to do what's called a Freedom of Information Act request. I have to review all of the records and then come up with a solution. Uh, first step is see me. Marie Smith says, my son's father is American born, but he is not a part of my son's life. My question is, can he become a citizen without him? If so, how? My no, husband. You have, to be at, you have to be in legal and physical custody of the U.S. citizen biological. My family. husband, who is a U.S. citizen, is now petitioning for him. Will it affect him? No, he'll get a green card, but he's not going to become an automatic U.S. citizen. He can naturalize when he's 18. Connie Seeley said, I applied for the adjustment of status, but I never filed for a work permit. Can I still file the I-765 and I already did the biometric? How long is it going to take for my adjustment? I filed in March. Uh, you can file the EAD uh, whenever you want. Uh, your EAD will be six months. Your adjustment will be 12 to 24 months. Okay, Isha Sisse saying, what happens when my uh, friend's lawyer makes a mistake on the date of your I-94? He entered the first date of I-94. Um, and you fix it at your interview. Then the last entries after biometric. You, you fix it at your interview, don't worry. Okay. John said, I'm 32 years old and I married my wife when she was 20. Will the 12 year age difference affect me when I'm getting my green card? I hope not, because my girlfriend's the same age difference as me. <laughs> uh, as long as it's a bona fide marriage, it's a bona fide marriage. Right. Letitia Johnson said, how long does it take for a child to get here from Jamaica after being filed for on August 15, 2018 by a US citizen? Uh, a child takes about 12 to 18 months. Judith said, how long is a child, uh, how long does a child take to come here from Jamaica, filed for by a stepfather who's a permanent resident, uh, put in for in April of 2018? Uh, 12 to 18 months. Oh, permanent resident? Mm -hmm. uh, could be closer to two to three years. It's about 4 a.m. says, should I provide a credit card a statement to the U.S. consulate or just my savings account? Savings account. Tasia said, what happens to my kids if my husband divorces me? They're already approved by USCIS and I'm waiting for NVC to start consular processing. I'm in the U.S. as a permanent resident and a recent extension you're, you're, awaiting my tenure. Your, your ex-husband can continue the case as long as he can show a bona fide parent relationship with your children absent your relationship. Sean Bryan said, my cousin came to the U.S. in 2015 and was charged with a felony for petty theft shoplifting. He later went to court and paid the fine. In May, he got married. However, two weeks, our aunt in New York called to say immigration came to her home with his photo looking for him. He's never been uh, to our aunt's house, but only used her address in on his visa form. He's there's, been in there's Florida. There's more to the case than a petty offense. I don't know what they're looking for, should, but let her come see Should he go later. ahead and file the ALS? No, immigration's looking for Oh, you go see a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Donovan said, Jamaican, I'm a Jamaican married to a U.S. citizen since December of 2018, but the USCIS site has been saying that the case is ready, but they've offered no interview yet. They say it's to 24 months just because it's ready. I answered that five times today. Re -re. Just, because, it, just oh. because it's ready doesn't mean that they're scheduling it tomorrow. Riri says, quick question. I have a friend who got married in Jamaica, but now he's in the U.S. He got married last month. I was wondering when it comes to uh, time for his wife to do his paperwork, uh, would it be a problem with the immigration? No, as long as... as long, uh, oh, person. yeah, that's the bigamist. I think a different is. bigamist. This it's is a the different bigamist. one. Yes, you can't be married to two people. Vic said, if my friend got a permanent resident card with no expiration date through the amnesty program in 1981, does he have to get a new card even yes, if it doesn't expired. have... Yes, it's expired. Darkin said, my family was filed for by a grandfather, but it's been long and, the, and he passed the age, so I'm no longer on the case. I've tried to apply for my U.S. visa, but got denied. Do you think this, uh, this hinders me also? Do you think when I try again, I should go with my three-year-old son? Excuse me. <laughs> no! No! Oh! No! <laughs> <laughs> That's it. No, it's over. All I'm right. Done. <laughs> Excuse me. We one second. <laughs>
<laughs> is it safe? It's safe to come up. It's safe to come up. So calm. You are so calm. Uh, yes, Excuse I see, I see we're about to blow up. You weren't going to let us know? No, forget it. No. <laughs> I was just going to let you go down with this. i got to be real. I appreciate the calmness, though. I feel like I would appreciate Brad in a crisis. Right. I would. Uh, very good, I right? needed the level head. Yes, uh, right. I was able to not become hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty funny. All right, so what do we have? How many did we have left? I think <laughs> we have like two left. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay le uh, three, three left. Three. Says. Darkin said, uh, "My family was filed for by my grandfather, but it's been so long, and I've passed the age, so now I'm no longer on the case. I've tried on, uh, once to apply for my U.S. visa, but got denied. Do you think this hinders me? And also, do you think when what I try again? What did you get denied for? For the uh, U.S. visa. Okay. Why was he denied? Is it because they passed the age or? Oh, okay, so he's over 21. Yeah. Okay, no, it won't have any effect. The only time applying for a visa and getting denied is gonna have an effect down the line is if there's some sort of fraud involved. Joy said, hey Brad, I've got a friend in the US on a J1, but he wants to stay in the US. Any way he can adjust? <laughs> any way this man can adjust? Ask it. Says most likely. Okay. Okay, Magic 8 Ball says most likely. I have no idea. I need a lot more information than that. Faith Walks saying, I have a friend who's here four years now on a B1, B2 visa. She got married, or she is not married, but wants to change her status. What can she do now, and can you help her? That's how do I get a green card? I need Basically. to have a consultation. All right, last one, Belgium came. We're over 25, but last one. Our very last one for the evening is going to come from Craig, who said, my, ca my friend came on a crewman's visa and married a U.S. citizen, got his advanced parole, and traveled back to Jamaica and returned to the U.S., uh, did his interview, and then they denied his I-45, saying the last time he traveled was on a crewman's visa. Could he reapply as a parolee? Absolutely. He got lucky. Because what he did was he filed an adjustment that he was otherwise not eligible for, mm -hmm. got the advanced parole, traveled on it. So his last entry was on parole. Right. So he can now refile again. Wow. And do wow. It. Well, yeah, I was confused that the yeah, crewman filed I an know, adjustment uh, yeah, at all. I've, heard, I've seen that trick before. Mm. Wow. Yes. Genius. All right. So uh, everybody who did not get their immigration questions answered, of course, they will be tomorrow. We'll have a full show sometime a little after 5.30, whenever we feel like coming on the air. It's not like whenever we feel like coming on the air. It's we're getting ready to come on the air. Sometime between 5.30 and 5.45, our show starts every day. And of course, on Friday, we're going to have a pop-up, which means you have to subscribe to both YouTube and Facebook because the pop-up is a surprise. We just pop up. We don't tell you when we're going to do it. So if you're not subscribed, you don't know we're coming on. And every immigration question asked of this this week, asked of us this week, we will answer in our pop-up. So please make sure to watch our pop-up as well. Finally, finally, some little housekeeping. Yeah. Okay, if you want to follow me at Real Brad Bernstein on Instagram, uh, I have been putting on the highlights of each day showing my story. Uh, and if you are part of the Brad Squad, uh, you can converse with me and ask me all the questions you want. I talk to everybody who is a member of the Brad Squad. You could also follow at uh, Brad Show Live on Instagram as well, and you'll get all sorts of good stuff. What's going on on it? I didn't see today. What's going on at Brad Show Live, Kim, today on Instagram? Uh, you know what? You didn't I, look. I don't know either. Okay, I'm going to look right now because oh. I was busy. So I'm going to look. Let's see what's going on at Brad Show Live. Yonathan Brad. is going to die. What? <laughs> I got to use it. Right yeah. <laughs> so one second. One second. <laughs> one second. Just hold it in, Jonathan. Just hold it in. <laughs> All sorts of good things going on at Brad Show Live. And uh, Belgium Kim and Jonathan Gilliam LSD on Instagram. Absolutely. You can follow me. Find all the stuff I'm up to. Go <laughs> real slowly and change <laughs> <laughs> I'm Belgium Kim TV. <laughs> Follow me here on Yannick yes. Fidelius TV. Right. <laughs> and finally, some more housekeeping. <laughs> now, I'm only kidding. Comments of the day. Over here. So Comments of the day. <laughs> God, I think Yannick's in a deep sweat over there. <laughs> he drank a huge coffee and like so much water in the show. He's dying. I don't know. Most he's like, I, he's like dude, this. I can't sit here anymore. <laughs> Most people haven't seen this, but he spent the last 20 minutes on a show like this. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. It was great. All right, let's finish. Come on, finish. Let's, let's finish. El President said, I just got home from work and the first thing I did was put my TV on and Bradshaw Live is on and I turned that 
Oh, El yeah. Presidente. El Presidente. I picture him. I picture him with like a big metal going across <laughs> the side here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like a military hat. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. He's El Presidente. He I is like El Chapo. Yes. But a good version uh, of no, El No, 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 like, you know, like a dictator. You know, like, <laughs> oh you know, like, you know, like, you know, like, you have like the metal, <laughs> yeah, the, the hat, the military yeah. hat. Yeah. The power. Yeah. I do. <laughs> All right, our second comment of the day comes from Yashika Burden talking to Jessica Lini saying, I think we should prep Uncle Brad, Belgium Kim, and Yo-Yo for that trip to Jamaica. Ooh. Ooh. Yes. I think so as well. Yes. Wow. Yes. Is somebody inviting us? Uh, I think everybody. That's an invite. Uh, that is an invite. That looks like one That to looks me. like a good invite to me. Yeah, I'll All take right. it. We're, we're ready, Brad. Whenever okay. you want to go. Okay. Take us. Uh, Connie Sile Kubeka, who is a brand new viewer on YouTube, said... Now I'm addicted. You guys are great, Brad. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. We like you. I like that. We, I, yeah. like that. Yeah. I like that. Yes. Welcome. All right, and we have one from Asset Lindo saying, I'm really enjoying my hump birthday. Thanks, Brad, and the marvelous squad. You all made my day truly super special. And Asset Lindo, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I hope yes. you have a wonderful, happy birthday and beautiful, beautiful things for you and your family for the entire year. Happy birthday, Asset Lindo. Yes. Brad Squad, we'll see you all tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Oh, we have one more. What? Stop. I was going crazy like this. You were. It was I thought, and, I thought, and I, I thought, thought you looked. Yeah, I, I, thought, I thought, I thought you had to go to the bathroom. So. <laughs> 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 Our last one is, yeah. from, is from Sophia R. Gray, who said, Brad Bernstein, this show takes away my sad day. It exercises my jaw never a dull moment. Keep it up. All right. <laughs> oh, I like that. I'm glad oh, we I'm stopped. Good. I'm glad we stopped. <laughs> all right. Have a good day. We'll see you all tomorrow. Thanks for watching. So, Sam, as part of the production, we have to say this disclaimer at the end of the show. Do you mind reading it for me? Okay, but you know, Brad, I have to do everything around here. It's bad enough. I've got to remember everything that happened on the episode from the previous day. Forget it. I'll do it. The proceeding was information only and not specific legal advice. Consult an attorney about your individual situation. Prior successful results do not guarantee a similar outcome in the future. To make an appointment with the Spar and Bernstein Law Firm, located at 225 Broadway in New York City, call 1-800-529-5465. That's 1-800-529-5465. Easy to remember, 1-800-LAWLINK. That's 1-800-L-A-W-L-I-N-K. Once again, make a call to 1-800-529-5465. And of course, link up with the law offices of Spar and Bernstein, located at 225 Broadway on the fifth floor. If I were you out there, make the call, make the link, make the connection, make it Spar and Bernstein. 1-800-L-A-W-L-I-N-K. That's 1-800-529-5465. And now, conveniently, located in Hartford, Connecticut on 1 Congress Street. Visit us in Connecticut or in New York at 225 Broadway. That's 1-800-529-5465. 1-800-LAWLINK. 1-800-529-5465.